last half of 2022. Um, I'm Randy. The other guy you can hear. I'm Danai. Yeah, sorry, the guy I interrupted just now is Danai. Um, <laughs> this is this is another episode of Brick Talk. This week we're calling it the Faster Horse Edition. Um, if you are joining us on YouTube, hello. And of course, you know that while we do try and check your comments on YouTube, um, this is primarily a, a conversation that happens on Twitter. And if you are on Twitter, welcome. Send a speaking request throughout the evening for any points you might have, any questions you might have, or anything. And outside of that, we'll just hear Dana and I talk about whatever we find interesting, which this week, as I said, is... is um, <laughs> the faster horse edition is something that I, I think we need to talk about we had somebody joining us very very early um we had somebody joining us very very early sir phil himself and phil was about to make a point because he was getting on the early one but go ahead phil oh wait sorry let me just finish my speech let me just finish the whole of the get the, the well, early somebody joining us very very early sir phil himself and phil was about to make a point because he was getting sorry about that yeah, so let me finish my speech and get out of the way. Um, you guys should know, in case you don't, this is not a investment advisory session. Danai Hall is an licensed investment advisor, but this is not one of his sessions. You should not expect to be hearing investment advice here. Nothing we say should be thought of or misconstrued as investment advice. We're not giving investment advice. I am not a licensed investment advisor, and I'm definitely not giving investment advice. And... Um, speak to an advisor about any investment decision that you may think you need to make or want to make, right? Um, and of course, that the one that I recommend is Danai, who is at thehalladvisory.com. Right. So having said all of that, welcome again to everybody. And we have Phil who, who, who linked us. I'm going to just start in calling first because it's what I naturally say. So Phil who called in first um, is up. What's up, Phil? <laughs> Yeah, man, big up the calling program. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, I, I just trying to, trying to take over from Sir Piggles who come on with him Fesco every week. <laughs> so, my, so my pre has been, I mean, I, I found it interesting that the topic, I don't know exactly what you're going to talk about, but I just want to big up the fastest horse for the year so far, which is accurate. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, looking see, forward to bigger things yeah you see you're saying you, say, you, you come on just to, um just you're to, saying so invested yeah very very invested <laughs> i create um of course very nice. well, of course why phil likes i create is um well phil you tell us why you like i create why you choose to start off by begin by beginning at up i'll big up my money ja by the way you guys can see on screen you guys are watching on youtube now and um uh, my money j is where we get our information from it's easily the best place for information on the stock market keeping track of your portfolio and a whole lot more uh sorry phil yeah go ahead yeah man no problem yeah year to date they are the, the top performer so far opening the year at 84 cents mm -hmm. And the current price is four dollars. And... The year at seventy-eight cents. Oh, seventy-eight cents. Yeah, it ended last oh, year at seventy-eight. Third. And now four dollars last... and fourteen cents as of today. So four hundred and thirty. What a jump! Yeah, four hundred and thirty percent gain. Um, but but so yeah, you know, I mean, in terms of the stock price, you know, the fastest horse, blah blah blah. But what I like their um their plan going forward with this visual vibe acquisition that they have spoken about mm -hmm. um i know that tyrone actually spoke to their numbers and i was just looking over it and seeing i mean he just briefly said a few months ago that their revenue is 150 odd million with a 35 percent profit margin Mm -hmm. And he recently spoke about 35% profit margin again on Kalita, but you know, we haven't seen those numbers yet, but if that is the case, I think it's quite commendable. I create has essentially bought a company, or is in the process of buying a company that's bigger than them. Mm -hmm. That's not very common. Mm 
The beauty of the market. Beauty of the market, it's amazing. If you really think about it. A junior market get company. Yeah, they still get money. Yeah, man. Mm. So I'm certainly looking forward to seeing those numbers and the effect of that and I create and you know I don't expect that visual vibe itself is gonna be you know I, I'm sure that that Tyrone has his own plans for visual vibe so you know mm-hmm. yeah he, he did say he, he, he did say that he wants to expand it so right. now it's acquire I want to get some do acquire and expect everything to do some more with it and get some more out of it. So, good yeah. plan there. And, and particularly that they're going, <laughs> the, the funding for the acquisition will come from an rights issue. Precisely. Yeah, so, um, nice amount of profit points there for anybody interested, in my opinion. Yeah. I think yeah. very, I think very, very plain profit points though. Um, yeah, but you know the usual. <laughs> yeah, man, it's tough to beat you over the head first, huh? Or some people over there first. But I think what I think a lot of people might be saying no is, well, let me miss it. <laughs> I get that every day. Oh, yeah. Let me oh, trust it. me. They miss it until they miss the next step. So, yeah. In fact, well, I get that every day. Seen. But then I have to say to, I say to a lot of people, yo, it's, it's not always done where you think it's done. The thing that you're looking forward to, so might don't happen yet. So, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, it, it, it that's a that's a good uh, not a bad way to start off your your version of the fastest horse i feel like it's a, um, <laughs> very biased version full disclosure uh, should be biased oh There's that's you should be biased i mean if you own it uh, uh, i've always looked at that situation it's funny you always hear it in the investment space one side decides uh, because they own it they mustn't talk good about it <laughs> that's exactly that's why i should be talking good yeah, about it because yeah, okay. I mean it, you know. Yeah. I find something sensible in it. So, you know, yeah. share it. I think, I think <laughs> they're oftentimes just not used to um, owning things that they're, 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 they're owning assets like that. So, it's something new I to I think so as well. Yeah. So, you don't really know what you should or shouldn't do. So, you assume a higher level of, um, I don't even know, if it's, it's secu- security theater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think I think I think I think a lot of it is thing that is just carried over things that I think a lot of it starts in the right place. Mm-hmm. So where where they get it from, that's where it should be applied. But then when when they're doing it for themselves and whatever, then it, they take it to a level where it do actually make sense to the point where right. I have no conversation about it anymore. <laughs> right. Right. So, I yeah, get yeah, you. Yeah. Oh, cool! I work here. So, like, basically, you know, certain place. If if you are giving, if you are an advisor, and in your in a certain capacity, then you have to do disclosure, and then you understand that why, because you have a you have a, you have a, you have a horse in that race, then you can't really. You, you no. cannot be pushing it along it's the lines of it. or outside outside of the realm of you know where okay, I should be pushing it. So, boy, let me talk good about this thing. On the base of it, on the base of me own it versus this is the actual good thing about this thing, right? So and then people take it to the point where yo, I'm just talking about this thing in my regular capacity. I have no need to do this thing, whatever, whatever. But you feel some level of what you call it now, um, restriction. And I'll talk at, at that point, it's self-imposed. Yeah, it's just made up. It's just made up. Yeah. You know? Yo, even in the industry, you're not you're not precluded from talking. You are not. It. No, no, no. Yeah. Far from. It. That's why. I, that's why I take so long to say what I say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I, yeah, you are not. You, the, the, that's why I say specifically. Is that me talking to a client and I own a stock? Mm-hmm. If it fits the client, it fits the client. If it doesn't fit the client, it doesn't fit the client. If I'm advising along the lines of what's in my portfolio, they're not making sense. That's not going yeah, to work right. for every single client. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You you have you have that fiduciary what I call a fiduciary duty. Fiduciary like responsibility. You give yeah. you know, the best advice, and if the client's needs or wants match, happen to match your personal needs or wants, then it's there. But then the, the disclosure requirement is there to say, um, at least let them know that you have a stake in it. Which again, mm-hmm. not important if you're not in the industry, mm-hmm. um, or if you're not speaking. From that level, you're not talking to that client, then, then there, there go, we go. full force. Yeah. <laughs> go for yeah. it. 
but then it's yeah, like imagine imagine, imagine me decide that they need it. imagine yeah imagine me coming on brick talk and every single time i want to talk about a stock i gotta tell people say i own i, gotta, I I don't want to you know, say I own this thing. Imagine somebody come in, some come in and ask a question, and I don't want the market to start. I, I don't want, I don't want it to be out there that boy. This good thing about this stuff is out there, right? Uh, or I'm looking at it from, I can make a money out of it, but I only also want to have a conversation at a certain level. But then no, I have the conversation at a level, but every single time I do that with disclosure, then of course there's more behind that. As, as far as somebody is concerned. Or then I only say this thing about it because you just want to have a conversation. I'm not really talking about it as a good thing. Just talk about it. But then no, you know it's a good thing because then I have it too. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't want. Imagine that. That that would that would suck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Right. Which, uh, it, it, and it's good that people know. For me, I I don't even try to take on. I'm not gonna play extra security guard for no reason. Oh so fuck. Yeah. What I will say is that um, uh, what I've always said is. Anything you hear me talk about, I assume I own it. <laughs> In fact, I assume I own everything I talk about. And, and then I'm also very open sometimes of saying mm -hmm. what I own, if I own something, if I'm buying more or whatever. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to be security. I'm not going to be pretending some high level of security that's on, not only not needed, but not sensible. Um, but yeah. Exactly. So it makes sense. All of that said, so it makes sense feel for you to be hyping your eye create, which you like. You know, I still don't buy no more. Uh, I still I don't buy any more since yeah any more no me neither it's been a while yeah I'm bought it. and though I'm not I'm, I'm not myself for it to some degree because yeah. good games good games good games I have the intention money off the government right there no, no, that late May early June time when dollar was out and people were worried about the great reset um it was very <laughs> very clear to me that it's a nice dip to buy into uh -huh. um. I just never did. And it's like I don't know, I knew. Like I, I didn't know, I, I knew, I knew. I just mm -hmm. I just never did. Um, yeah. Sometimes you look at, you know, there are a lot of gone, it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> Where is it? I said, no, it's gone, it's too late. <laughs> 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 it's a party. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 done. yeah, not really. But yeah, um, I just, I just, I just haven't. Um, yeah but it's, it's an interesting um experience for me whole i mean it's a, the heaviest hold i've ever had um on a on a stock in terms of the percentage of my portfolio and just the size of the holding and you do i mean you have pointed it out before randy that every time you go in to make a play one when you have a holding like this with a low average purchase price you always have to wonder, you know, if you have some cash, are you going to go into this, you go into that, or you just add to this, add to the accurate stake, you know? So that's something that, you know, that I've been challenged with every now and again. So mm -hmm. good challenge to have. To, to, to it or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, whether you add to the stake or, you know, some yeah, other thing. Right, yeah. Especially looking at the fact that you know iCreate is making is actively making moves and as I said you know profit points along the way, moving forward. It's a depending on your goal. Definitely, there are legitimate arguments for buying iCreate even at the current price. So even at, well, I believe even, I'm gonna be buying at some point. So <laughs> oh no, I, I, pretty soon yeah. for me as well. Yeah, yeah. and, and it, it, I'll probably if it goes higher. I mean. I have my timings around it at the milestones I'm looking for. Which means that if they don't have me at and the price goes higher, I'm probably gonna be buying it higher too. And if it goes well, lower, it's, even nicer. It's I funny just, how that I, works, right? Yeah, well for me. Well what, what do you mean? It's not confusing. No, just, 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 no, just the idea that thing that if it goes higher then and mm -hmm. the profit points are still there, then it'll buy. It'll buy, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Take time yeah. to come to that point, though. As long as that price makes sense, just feel why. You say it takes some time to come to that point, Phil? Yeah, in terms of the, the journey of learning this stocks thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. This stocks thing. This stocks um, thing. That's actually a great point. Go on that. What do you mean when you say it takes some time to, to come there? Like, where, how was it for you? 
because I that's one thing I can never tell for myself in comparison. Let, let me hear how, how how long did it take you and how what was that journey like? Yeah, man. I mean, early on, you you think that you you're being logical and you know something reach a certain price. Something reach a certain price, you do feel that yeah, it's out of your. You're not going to go much higher. Um, and but then you you learn that there are profit points that you look forward to along the way, and a price the stock price may go up for other reasons. Uh, before what you anticipate is the actual reason for it to go up. And if that thing is still happening, you know, it's reasonable to still buy. The, it's it's not unreasonable to still buy the stock once it meets your your timelines and your goal. No, so I mean, early along, it is logical. It logical. actually is logical. It just doesn't seem that way when you think, you know. Then I you get a whole we get a feedback. Remember to mute. Yeah, I, I, yeah, no, yeah. Going back to it, for us. Sorry, yeah. yeah, 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 Phil. I say not only is it logic, not only is it. Not a bad idea. It's, it's a, a, not a good idea. It's a better idea. It's the best idea. Yeah. Yeah. It's just not what the typical person thinks. And it's not what the typical beginner thinks. And it's not what the typical expert says either. I hear a whole heap of that. it gone. My price. Right. From, from yeah, but then, if, yeah. But, but then you remember that the, the typical expert not buying stocks anyway. Not buying anything anyway. Not even, wow. <laughs> not even bonds. Let's be clear. Let's be clear. I said that. You guys know that. You guys hear say it all and you've heard it. But let's be really serious. Most people don't think so. Most people see and think of us the same way as they think of anybody who is in the finance space. It's just mm -hmm. finance people in their minds. So mm -hmm. even the people who say rubbish, talk rubbish, carry the same weight in their eyes as us. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, if, if if those people are saying things like my price or yeah, gone <laughs> or whatever, um, yeah, it, it, it it's just it, it's just it's just something I'm always cognizant of that like to most people there is no difference. To most people they see it the same way. And the, most people think that yeah, if you're in a finance, you know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. I, I think like we touch that every week. Uh, it's always a constant war, and I that's nothing what I wanted to talk about. But yeah, it's it's. That point, it just it just stood out to me that it's always. I'm always cognizant of that people are not thinking of that when they're. Most people. I mean, they have no yardstick. I think that's the problem. And so it sounds sensible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is that they make the mistake of putting weight then on what sounds sensible. So like. By low like sell high. Yeah, like on the back of my mind, I'm thinking how oh, I just said that I'm very likely probably buying now. I'm buying higher. Okay, so I'm buy. They're buying based on how they feel. I sound or you sound, and I or or, or feel. Mm -hmm. Come on, I talk about every week. <laughs> I'm going to read top ten as you feel. You feel most of them I talk about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Really interesting, but yeah, a hell of a, a hell of a thing. Somebody on YouTube said, "Phil, I get. I'm saying this directly to you." Let's see if I create the limitless guys. Let's see if we'll, the I create will finish the year the fastest horse. That's not at all what I meant when I say fastest horse either. But, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I think yeah. you use that, isn't it? They use it here. Horse is in a different way from you. Yes, yes. That's true. Dark horse, no? Dark horse. <laughs> oh, God. Somebody who asked me about that again. I got Good it. Lord. Yeah. Good luck with that. What, the dark horse thing? <laughs> Yep, yep. I've finally gotten far, far, far away from it. Um, only for it to come back. Yeah, every, well, it comes back every now and then. People ask me about it too. Um, but what I actually meant is is around that Henry Ford, that Henry Ford was well, attributed to him. I think it. He said it. It's uh, no matter. I'm gone now, so we've decided that he said it. But Henry Ford years ago said uh, Ford of Ford Motor said that it was in a conversation, I don't remember it was with somebody else, but it, it, they're talking about him and knowing what to build for people. And he's saying that, you know, if I had asked the people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
And of course, he popularized the Ford Model T, which kind of industrialized the car, brought the car to, to Americans. And of course, that model was copied all over the world. Um, mm -hmm. And his point around innovation was that, you know, if, he, if, if instead of just doing what I'm knowing him head makes sense, which everybody now follows, um, if instead he had asked people what they wanted, that I said faster horses. And I, I said this when I was thinking about the JSC. We were looking at the JSC putting out, what was, is it a statement from Dr. Street Forest where she was talking about um, the changes coming to the JSC? Mm -hmm. I think that was it. I don't remember. Was it an article? Yeah, I, don't article. Remember. I think it was an article. Okay. Was yeah, an article? Uh. yeah, so I, I think it was an article where she was talking about the changes coming to the JSC. And um, the, it was, I, I'm trying to remember how, the genesis of, of this thing, right? Well, I remember, I'm remembering it now. So an article, of course, came out talking about how, you know, the JSC is going to have shorting. Um, and before the article, as usual, uh there are some tweets before and after and uh the tweets were these tweets were from chris berry i'm looking for the tweets to see what they're saying but they're pretty much he's saying that the jsc getting shorting and uh i don't know the reactions to it sometimes across the streets mm -hmm. were, were very <laughs> very very interesting very me. weird yeah mm -hmm. very very weird that's why i spoke that's why i decided to call it the faster horse because this is um I see, I see, I see somebody say, turn the JC into a casino. And I'm like, boss, if you know, I shot it, just don't shot, you know, shot boss. It was simple as that. Right. Exactly. You're not forcing um, everybody to a shot. <laughs> so, so this is the, this is the, the tweet from Chris Berry uh, that happened a few, three days ago. It says the JC is finally coming with short selling and it's great and it'll add more liquidity to the market. And the JC needs proper f plugins to facilitate brokers to manage credit for their clients. Or the program will fail. Um, I'll call it like a second level tweet from him. You know, him top level tweets are the ones that end with a question mark. <laughs> so, so once this one didn't end with a question mark, I guess there's still some room, some 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 wiggle room in there. Brokers have multi transactional credit relationships with each client. It's not feasible for us to strip out one transaction or a few transactions out of the relationship and effectively manage client credit. It's actually a great point, you know, um, which I think maybe a little a little deeper but yeah the the gist of it was that they're coming with short selling and the reactions mad <laughs> david stevens david underscore cool breeze madness this market is not ready for shorts um sorry uh not sure if the introduction of an instrument that offers unlimited losses and limited gains is necessary or helpful for jamaica there is no liquidity problem here that's from Simon Kweper, I'm probably screwing up his last name. Uh, Jamaica, says, did they mention which comes as a question? We need commercial loan securitization to become a reality in order to really open the JSC up, in my opinion. It's missing a, a key ingredient to the cook pot. Okay. Wow, that might increase vol volatility. Will we see the mark to market for real estate? Not good to have every operating company invest in real estate as a balance sheet plug. Um, not to mention it was a major contribution. <laughs> Run with it. Point is, the, the, the initial reaction, at least from what I saw, was, was mostly bad. And then, funny enough, again, big up the retail investors, including the people I'm sure watching and listening to this. Uh, they, they are, they are, their reactions are more... I think along the good side of things, you have the investment game on the JC is about to go up another level. Oh, this is going to be fun, a matter of timing. This guy says he can finally come back to the market. I guess sharting was what was keeping away from the market. The JC finally catching up with the world. Mark Gale, our market is not is not ready for this. With oh. increased use of margin over the but, last few years, shorting could lead to a massive volatility as a result of more frequent margin calls. We don't okay, have the man. liquidity and market depth to manage shorting. JA Stock Exchange should reconsider. Well, uh, generally, what's the issue? I don't know. Mark could come on and, and I'm sure ventilate. No, I mean, no, 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 not Mark, just generally. It, 
I don't know left. because if I recall correctly, the thing that is always said about the JSC is how backward it is and how it don't have these features and how it don't give investors. Um, <laughs> every time we the get these features, that probably. But the second features come along, all of a sudden it's um well we're, we're not, not ready. ready for it. No, 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 this is too dangerous. If you ask them what they want, they will tell you they want a faster horse. I'm sure if you really Oops. ask them what they want, all they tell you they want is more IPOs, right? <laughs> I mean, literally the thing that not only does the market, the people who, when they think about it for a few, few seconds, decide that they actually want it because it's exciting. It's another level to the market. Not outside of exciting, it's also another way to earn. Um, two, it's... It, it brings more depth to the market. It is some of those more advanced features that we've said that we've wanted for a long time. We can't say we want it out of one side of the remote and then when it's coming, we suddenly don't want it because it could be dangerous. That's like saying, oh, don't ever make any better cars because faster cars can crash hard and, and hurt more people. So because the risk is inherent in a thing, you completely throw the whole thing out. The market isn't ready for it. They should stop. I, I honestly don't get it, but I. I... Um, I mean, and so that, 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 that was my point around, around the faster the horses and a reaction to it. And of course, I have tongue in cheek, second faster horse thing I do because another thing I have on the market is that we, we do this, we have this reaction to every bit of innovation. <laughs> Everything that anybody does that's even slightly innovative. A lot of if you do any other research that I do, you, you know, it's not necessarily innovative. It's, there's nothing new in the market, not even sharding or any other derivatives, right? Um, well, the moment it comes. Everybody Get does on. exactly that thing, right? So like JMMB does an AP and now APO, 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 APO. Um one company followed very stock quickly, split. usually by like five other stock splits, right? Mm -hmm. Uh I mean literally companies do even the only time you see rights issue now is APO or rights issue, or rights issue or APO. Right, APO slash rights issue. And if you understand what rights issue is and what an APO is, you know that there's no reason at all to ever write that. That sentence mm -hmm. really means that we're planning to do an APO. <laughs> right? Um, it's just weird. Like, what, else did, what else do you have? You have like just these ideas. One, it's like there's not much innovation and there's not much of the same thing people seem to cry for in the market. And whenever it happens within the finance space locally, all you have is a bunch of other people just sitting mm -hmm. there. Maybe there was investing uh, there any energy into it, right? Listed. That's why so many of the companies on the dream market are listed by Mayberry because mm -hmm. they were the only ones doing it. And I, I can't tell you how many brokerage houses I was, I've been in and heard experts say, I don't, I don't invest in junior market companies. I don't invest in, even now there are some people who are like that. I don't Bro, invest in junior market companies. I, I, I have a client mm -hmm. that she reached out to her brokerage house. No, he reached out to his brokerage house mm -hmm. and he was, so. I could move by X percent within a quarter and mm -hmm. he said he is looking at junior market companies currently for the time move and you know what i'm telling bro our house our research department doesn't do research on junior market. they don't look at the junior market companies what they don't look at junior market companies and and of course, she wasn't sure what 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 thing the what made market company could help him, but they don't look at junior market companies. The research department. They don't say them go. They reach work at eight o'clock and come three. Cause <laughs> what a limited scope you have. You ignore half the market for whatever arbitrary reason. 
you know, look at you. But Jesus, that's the yeah, that's blown my mind. I would, you could have never asked me. I, I, could, I could never asked you a question again. So I, I obviously, guess, you just never know nothing ever, right? I guess that no. house is not ready for shorting. Uh, not, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that might be the issue, Phil. That like the house is just not really there. That, that might be it, you know. Because one of the things wouldn't because based on what how, how shorting goes, wouldn't you see in order to facilitate it, like houses would have to have their buying accounts more active. They would have to, you know, have a share of have a stock of shares. No, not necessarily the house. No, but they, depends. It can there be arbitrary be, borrowing. It can be okay idea. where Sorry, not not to not to Working cut both it? of you, not, not not to cut both of you, but um, let me at least explain it because some people might be lost. So, mm -hmm. shorting essentially, um, simple version of shorting is that it's making money when a share price falls instead of rises. So how it works is that if if I want to short, let's say I wanted to short Cygnus, right? <laughs> um, it would the only way I would make money from that short. Is if Cygnus is what's his Cygnus's current share price? Anyway, I'd make money from that chart. Is if Cygnus, which is currently at thirteen dollars and thirty cents, thirteen dollars and thirty cents. Um, if I believe wow. that it was well, let me go back a few. Weeks. Let's go to the end of June when it was at fifteen dollars. Let's say at that point, I thought to myself, you know what? I want to make 10% profit. Um, and I think Cygnus... And so I, 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 I go to my broker. I say, I'm shorting Cygnus. And essentially what they do is they... I, I, I hate how I, I, I slow down to... to explain it because i i try not to do it one time because i know this is the explanation that people are going to jump onto um essentially you're saying that i will give you let's say you're shorting i thought it's a signals simplifying it you're saying that in one month i am going to give you back either a dollar amount equal to one thousand units of signals or one thousand actual units of signal shares right and I'm signing a, a contract to say that in one month, um, July 30th, I will give you back 1,000 units of Cygnus. Now, how you make money is if you have 1,000 units of Cygnus on June 29th at $15 per share, that's $15,000, right? If you, if you sell those Cygnus shares for $15,000 and what has happened over the last few days actually happened so it's now at 1330 it would now let's keep it simple at a thousand it would now cost you thirteen thousand three hundred dollars to buy back a thousand signal shares right and so the difference between the the 15 and the 1330 would be your profit that's how you make money from it so there's a limit to how much money you can make from sharting the dangerous part that people always talk about is the fact that there is no limit <laughs> on how much money you can lose because mm -hmm. as you realize if you it's make money when the share price goes down then you lose money when the share price goes up and the share price can only go down to zero but it can go up as far as it can go indefinitely up. yeah so if you get it wrong you could end up losing significantly larger amounts of money more money than you're you probably able, able to to have right because let's say it's interesting isn't it because that's the opposite of buying stocks stocks can go up if you buy the stock then it can go mm -hmm. up forever it can only go down so much mm -hmm. yeah and and so yeah the 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 that is the reason why people often speak about it as being more dangerous than than um investing in a typical manner and mm -hmm. what's a way to focus is, on the extremes yeah yeah but you know what i want i want anybody who doesn't know and listening or watching this to have an understanding of not just what it is but how people think around it so because of that no limit on how much money you can lose it is it is considered to be more dangerous right the good part of it is it allows you to make money even when stock prices are falling 
Mm-hmm. Going back to my point about it being good for the market, I've always said that their tweets from years ago, I think I have me saying that the JSC actually needs shorting as a protective mechanism. Mm-hmm. Many times, as much as I was talking, we were talking a couple of weeks ago about how the US, from the start of the year, about the US market being down and blah, you know, people being in the red, blah, blah, blah. The truth is the US market has these options. And so oftentimes when you're watching TV or you listen to the news and you hear them saying, oh, you know, markets are falling and XYZ share prices have been plunging. Don't cry for them. There are people there who are making significant amounts of money from it because mm-hmm. they are shorting those things. It is an SK. Be back, man. Get popular. Black man, when COVID hit, mm. it was a big deal that he was shorting. Ah, yeah, Bill yeah, yeah. Black man, and yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the fir- yeah. And the first big short when market crashed way back in 2008, 2007. Mm-hmm. A whole movie made up was very popular. That was about these guys taking a bet against the market. Yeah, yeah. The, the big short movie is uh, is really about a a, a, a trader or one who I, I rate the, the three heavily. Bori, um, mm-hmm. who made a bet that you know the housing market was falling, and he essentially shorted the housing market. The, um, and I'm oversimplifying, but that's essentially what he did. So he planned to make money if the housing market fell, which mm-hmm. before that point, the housing market was considered to be like the safest set of things, right? So he was considered mm-hmm. to be dumb to be doing that, um, and dangerous and wasting his investors' money. And it turned out that he made significant amounts of money because the housing market fell as we all know so Mm -hmm. um simple version with stocks shorting you make money when the share price is going down you lose money if the share price goes up and there's no limit on how far up a share price can go so shorting is considered to be a little bit more dangerous in not a little bit so some people consider it to be a whole lot more dangerous um as a recar as a as a result of that of course for the for the broker to allow you to short, it then means that at the point when you are going to sign that contract, those shares have to exist. Somebody have to lend those shares that you are agreeing to pay back at a certain date. Right? Those shares have to exist. And so that comes back to your point that you're mentioning, Phil, about what's needed. Um, there is a need for a pool of shares. Like if if nobody's willing to put their Signal shares, shares up, up mm-hmm. to be lent, then you, you, the broker can't offer a short on 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 signal shares because they have to have the shares to actually lend. Um, mm-hmm. And the beauty of that also, if you think about it, especially for you people who believe in value investing on the long term, that's another way that you can earn. Because if you know, say you have some shares, and listen. money lending those shares to the broker and a local to lend them out so even mm-hmm. when the share price is going down you are collecting a little bit of money every month because the broker is using your shares as a part of of their pool and that's another way that you can make money from it even without participating in it um mm-hmm. and so yeah that's that's the essence of what shorting is and it would be introduced in very very simple terms to the local market the 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 existence of that opens up a whole new world of things. It really brings a level of a new layer of sophistication to the market. Um, Mm -hmm. And it's supposedly coming this year. So just bring it back up to speed and you guys know what's needed. Phil, you were saying something about about what the brokers or or something like that? Right, yeah. You know, like you were saying, the brokers would have to hold or be able to or have a source of, of shares. Okay. Either, either they, they would have to buy buy the shares, I, I would think, and have mm-hmm. um, a pool of shares available to lend. Or, mm-hmm. or like you said, you know, borrow from other shareholders and lend to, to people who want to short. Mm-hmm. What, right. I, what I think so is like to happen, though, is mm-hmm. that on your brokerage client agreement, you would agree to think that. To be lending to that like your share, if you have a share of series, you agree to that. Agree to them having access to it. To lend. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know I know at least one um agreement that I've signed does include that. Something of a sort, no? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, interesting. So I thought, I was saying it was interesting about the, the fact that it's reverse. It, it's a reverse situation for buy, meaning there's quote unquote risk. The risk is the the possibility of a loss. Your loss is infinite. The your you are you have possibly infinite losses, meaning that there's no cap on the amount of losses you can take, mm-hmm. but there's a cap on the profit you can make. The people who are thinking, and, and the opposite is true if you're buying stuff. There's there's no cap on the possibility of how far your money can. So you don't you don't cap on the gains you can make for a stock because the stock can go up indefinitely. Mm-hmm. But there's a cap on how much money you can lose. You can only lose a hundred percent of your money. You can you can't lose more than you put in, right? Yeah. But the same people who are but that's afraid a good point. of the but, negative, yeah, mm-hmm. aren't 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 similarly optimistic. Stocks. They yeah. also seem to be pessimistic about buying stocks. So they, they're mm-hmm. also afraid of the loss from buying stocks mm-hmm. in a Just similar way it. as they are afraid of the loss from doing a stock. So as far mm-hmm. as I'm concerned, it does sound a lot like these guys are afraid of investing and correct. We invest under your bed. Yeah. <laughs> it's not for you. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Because I, I don't I don't I don't know that anyone actually I, I, I've never heard a man say, I, I've never heard it say from these people that I first that boy, you know, you can read in it as much as possible. And uh, even from buying stocks, they, they don't, they don't they, I've never heard, I've I, I, I found it, I've never been in a situation where I'm talking to somebody and uh, somebody that's reasonably informed, I would say. And their worry is that if I invest, I lose all my money. Just meaning, you get me? Like they're, they're, they, the worry of a hundred percent loss of all their money from it's always, you know, about the stocks thing, right? Mm-hmm. And so meaning, boy, I'm gonna buy some shares. It's always somebody I just never read no stocks at all. I will do this new thing. How much can I lose? Cause yo, it's my money. My first time I'm doing this. People are reasonably for me. You don't have that. It, it, you don't have that conversation with them. But for, so, so for me, when those when those same people turn around and suddenly, boy. You know, it, when they turn around and then the, the talk about the, the short situation, that that that's their go-to. Is a, a very odd situation for me. Yeah, yeah. If anybody confused by that, I'm pretty much saying the way that you'd go completely broke with, with shorting is a stock would have to go up significantly in price. Um, and if a stock can go up significantly in price and it would be so easy for, for anybody to be trapped and fall into that trap, then you shouldn't be Buy worried. Itself. You should be just making so much money on the stock market. But <laughs> they, 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 they're yeah. not. That, you're, so you're very optimistic about the potential gains on the stock market, then, right? That's what you're saying <laughs> to me. If, if you're so afraid of taking a, a, of, of doing a, just doing any arbitrary short and losing mm-hmm. infinite amounts, you are very optimistic about the stock market. You should just be buying stocks and sitting down and chilling because you know they make 600% just by taking a breath in the morning. And that's the what. I, I, I don't hear that. I don't hear that optimism that you're coming with on the reverse side of the argument. Because it, that's true. If I shot, I'm going to lose everything. No matter which shot I take, no matter it, like the. the, the, the Knee jerk reaction to shorting anything on this market is why I can lose everything and lose so much, so 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 much. All the stocks can fly so 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 much. Really? Then why buy some stocks, boss? Because you know it. You sound like you really believe this stock will fly this much. You should be worrying about shorting. You should be buying stocks. That's Lucky true. I am buying. You can make that six hundred percent just so. That's true. That's true. Um, and you know, I don't want to assume anybody's views. So if anybody has. Um... love to talk about it or anything else on the market because there are also a lot of very interesting things happening on the market um mm-hmm. but for this point yet yeah, then i i don't i don't know and I, I like to try and balance the argument and try and play devil's advocate and say okay you know what 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 could what could we not be seeing that what could some of the downsides be um the, like the market is not ready for shorts let's work with that as a first point i wonder if you're talking about the people in the market 
But how would they know that? I don't know either. I don't. I don't. I say I want them, but it it also. But you you know what this? I mean, you know how. Again, the typical in quote unquote in the no finance person talks from a level of. I know, and nobody else don't know. I I know so much about the market, and I'm so sophisticated as an investor. These plebs. It, it, not, not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to exaggerate that. I, I, I try to be that guy and say, boy, that's what I think. But it, it, all, it, it comes off as uh, es the, the estimation of, of the gap between them. this investing thing and most people just don't know anything halfway about this thing like that really so i figure that it, it feels like they're worried that boy the people just don't know and the people are supposed to lose a lot of money being blind doing yeah it's funny you know you know i don't, I don't find across the beginning you know, much blind investors i mean i don't find people that are gone for about I mean, like, it's it's a rare situation where i find somebody that just meet them and they believe in their ability to, in, they're just starting and they believe in their invest, invest to a certain level where they just, them can, they can fling money. People that say, oh, I am very aggressive, they want a high return, whatever, whatever, but they have a level of fear and understanding that, yo, I don't really know this thing to this degree. I, even if they don't acknowledge it, there's some degree, I don't find a person that, yo, I, it's rare that I find it, lock my eye and buy and I believe my expert and I believe, and, and then it ends up that no, no go so, right? It, for most people, it's, it's not that. So to expect that people will get up and put their money on the line from shopping, I don't really see like, I don't see I don't see people get up and say, Boy, I don't actually I don't have any any which way clue that this thing will go up. So I'm gonna short. Uh, you get me? I I I I I'm not I'll be this thing will fall to think there and this can be wrong. But to some degree they have an expectation based on something that they think is logical or some misinformation or something that's not really so a level of misunderstanding around something but the logical step after that after that misunderstanding or, or that limited view is it's going to eat it's going to go up or it's going to fall so if you go fall we avoid it if you go up then i will buy into it because as far as i'm concerned you know how to do proper research or enough research around it from my view this is a great thing i'm going to buy it that's typically where you find people running to think that but you don't find them saying like my, I find this thing and any, anything goes on. It's not, a, it's not often that it's actual stupidity. That when buy a stock and it just go up, it's, you, you, you find the, the mistakes people make are often repeatable in a way like, I see stocks going up, so I think that's how stocks work. So because this stock is going up now, means something good is for, going for it, and that means it's continue going up. Mm. That kind of thinking is applicable in so much other things that they bring it to the stock market. Yeah. So right. it don't make it. It's not right for the stock market, but that, that's why they. But it's logical elsewhere, so they bring it here as a as a, as a form of logic, and then that's why they invest along those lines. So the premise is wrong, <laughs> but the logic behind it, then yeah, cool, run with it. So yeah, I, I don't I don't find that people are. Stupid in that way. But for some reason, all the finance types I know seem to be worried about it. As I know it's, it's, a, it's, it's a finance expert. David Stevens is not, a, he's an, he's that, he calls himself an investor and an entrepreneur. And I believe he runs a part of the QWI portfolio. So it's not like somebody mm -hmm. who just started or don't know, right? Yeah, no MP. Um, well, he knows the market. Just Sorry, that's me being cheeky. QWI is not anywhere near their their even their IPO Navi now. So, mm. Mm -hmm. um, so the, I don't know if I know him thing like that. But that's again me being cheeky because you guys have heard me talk about Q, QWI and this before and how much you rate it, um, how much you rate its possibilities, what it can do. What's crazy to mm -hmm. me is that I believe that I I don't know for sure because I don't know the gentleman, but I believe that he gets into that side of the U.S. market. Mm -hmm. yep. I wouldn't be surprised at that. I know, I know, I know of, I guess, 
That means that he does invest on the US market. I don't know if he does shorting on the US market. But I, so that's what I say. I don't understand. I, I actually don't understand where the conversation becomes we're not ready. I don't understand where people get what's the basis for that to say, is it the people they're talking about not ready? So because they mean the people at a certain level, or is there actually something about market mechanism that is then changed by a short thing being introduced that they feel like we mash up the market? That's the wonder. When I hear people talk about leverage, that's a personal thing, bro. And if I stop, then a short position and the margin calls on that. That happens everywhere. That's part of the market. Yeah, and like, that's like part everybody. of the market. If it comes, if it comes, it comes. And you have to, hopefully, we you have the information that, to know what about is going on there. Where like in the US, you can say, oh boy, co leverage XYZ stock is. And they make a play based on that, which is funny because you know how charts work. <laughs> if if you believe the stock will go up, short way cause something happen on that basis. And then you have to be the stock will go up first, right? Mm -hmm. Then you have to, it, it's not going to just happen just because it happens. It happens because something else is going on that causes this, that causes a chain reaction. And this happens because this is how this thing works. Why, I don't know why I, was, this, I, I don't have this idea that the market happens in a vacuum. We actively, <laughs> it's, it's like you're afraid to buy this. You think the stock is good. You go to 40 and you believe that you're buying it if you're buying it will have nothing to do with it going to 40. Mm, yeah, of course. Because the, the stock price so is a twenty dollar stock. Yeah, exactly. It's a twenty dollar stock. I will buy it at mm -hmm. twenty one, but I'll buy it at twenty and you you pray and you beg and your ball say drop to twenty. And you be going to forty, but Jesus Christ it will go to <laughs> Jesus Christ is going to forty, but it's only good at twenty. And you don't have an, and you don't believe that you you have to actively participate in that party, mm -hmm. right? In fact, you buying cut increases the likelihood of it going to forty because you're taking more units off for the trading or blah 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 blah. You know what I'm talking about, yeah. But yeah, to me, we have this view that the market happens and our actions within the market thing. Like, and it, I always find it interesting because people who definitely should know that often speak you know and I, I don't mean those like a finance guy i mean like a finance guy that runs a fund in the market because if him buying today that stock price could move if it's a right stock that kind of thing right so you should actually know that but then it's the way when you speak about it as it, it's almost as if people have no impact within the market because if the market is moving because because the pe has to be xyz because of the i think it, well Fundamentals in the market, I, I, kind of thing. Yeah, so I people don't about reacting to fundamentals. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I personally don't bother about it too much anymore because it is. I don't. It hey, is you very talk clearly about it. an advantage. You know who knows what they're talking oh, about fox. and who doesn't. It, it let quickly. me know if you understand truly how to invest and how to how to make money on the market and what makes money on the market and what the market is. And I didn't mean to that bad thing. I just I look for it now and it's an advantage. If if somebody's mm -hmm. saying those things, I go, okay, that's a great person yeah. because I know how that person thinks and I can invest mm -hmm. against them because they make the same mistakes every time. Or they lying. <laughs> no, I don't know. One. I don't think I don't think you mean like so they they know what we know, understand what we understand, but choose to say something like that. Yeah. To what? To throw people off? Or to have or keep the conversation at a certain level. I'm thinking of one. You know, I think I think you know who I'm thinking about. If I think that I think only if, one person does that, and yes, whenever exactly. they, whenever they do it, even if they do it in person with me, I've had them. Do, I think about that today. If we think about the same person, and even they do it with me, mm -hmm. I I don't usually correct them. I usually listen to it because I, I'm like, if this person thinks that I'm an idiot, and so they're trying an idiot trick on me, I'm even okay. That. Yeah, if you uh, let me see where you're going with this, because surely. You don't think I'm 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 just dunce. I have to be dunce to believe that. But yeah, I see you doing something that looks like you're there's there's that. no way, there's no way you think that basically. Exactly, but they act that way. But again, I only know of one person who I think matches that. I think we're thinking of the same person. Uh -huh. Everybody else I think yes. who speaks like that, I think 
They believe they truly it. believes it because when I have other conversations with them, they show it in everything else. You get me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That sort of thinking that the not understanding of the market shows in so many of the conversations. So I, 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 I don't, I said, to say, I don't think that it's a pretense from, from David Stevens. I think he truly believes it's not ready for sure. And in his case, I mean, he had a, he had a couple of other tweets talking about it. Um, Okay. I think I'd, I had responded. Yeah, I, I, would be, I would even talk about David, actually. I was just generally. Yeah, but yeah, just, I, I'm not just talking about him, but I think he's an easy case to speak to because that's somebody that we know reliably, knows about the market, understands investing. Um, and it, and it's not it's not like a, a fly-by-night sort of thing, right? He knows, he's <laughs> a finance guy. He knows his stuff, right? Um, I had asked why not, and I remember there was some more. There we go. The market is too illiquid. And I found that funny. I found I actually laughed at this one because somebody else said, Oh, this is going to increase liquidity. Or and somebody <laughs> else said, We don't need it because the market is liquid enough. Uh-huh. <laughs> but uh, he's saying, you know, the market is too illiquid, which in itself is great because I know that that sort of thinking exists on the market because I've asked, you see three fundamentals people don't who all agree on one thing and keep them separate and ask them the same questions and dig into what they know and you get three separate fundamentals answer yeah yeah, yeah exactly yeah. interesting right three, three completely separate fundamentals so i know this is happening you know because i i always ask that deadly question that everybody's scared of why like why not the market is too liquid some companies float way too small the infrastructure is not in place to support proper monitoring the risk outweigh the benefits in his opinion and if the average investor loses confidence in the market it's all over David Stevens, there are more investors in the market now than there have ever been in the market's history. And the vast majority of them are... are and would they, would they lose investors. confidence in the market or shorting? Market. I don't think that making the market more sophisticated is going to cause the average investor to lose confidence. And then uh, what else could make the average investor lose confidence? And maybe they try this thing and they get burned, so they say, yo, I'm done with it. Mm-hmm. That, that, what, about, what about the ones that get it right? Everybody who's put their money in a fund for the past however many years, if they did, I don't think they'll quit they because they have, those people have lost <laughs> a lot of money. <laughs> right? Um, yo, I've been going through that thing silently. They, should I invest? in a fund or this sort of, and it's a pain for me. Like a unit and not because of, Yeah. And mm-hmm. the, they they have the right reasons to look for something like that. I mean, yeah, I am actually doing a long-term thing. I don't want to be stocks, right? And I, maybe I want something that's somewhat more market-weighted. Right, something like that. That's well, then you start looking. What, what do you mean? If you don't lose the meaning, they want they want to diversify. They want they want a bag of things in it, and they don't really want to buy them individually. They want they want to put them ten grand and still get that diversification. Ooh, like that, somewhat near where the market move. Be more people. Them, listen, when I know this thing, but I don't want, right, I don't want to get the it, IPO three hundred percent. But I just want to get a little bit of it. If the market doing good, I get a little bit of it. Yeah, and that. The, yeah, let me bet on every horse in the race. Yeah, but then I, I have to go down and I, they hear and or they listen to YouTube and like, you know the index the the index the index the heavy Warren American Buffett bias. Oh, yeah. yeah, man. Oh, it's funny. Yeah, I, I love about that quote. The guys like me part. But we'll go back to that. I, almost every week I'll bring it up. But <laughs> uh, the the talk about buy into the index, buy into the thing that moves exactly like the market, and that's that's typically the talk you get. Mm-hmm. But when we bring it to locally, the thing that we get unit trust because these guys are heavily diversified, whatever, whatever. But then I can't honestly tell that person to do that because just on a returns basis over that long period of time, I, I usually I usually say to them, all right, here we go. You go to the broker and you ask them for the returns over the over the last X period of time. So if you want the next 20 years of investing, ask the broker what their unit trust return for the last for up oh, for uh, 
to say that might not be the best thing. Because as much as Unitrust is, it's funny. It's, it's I can't tell you if it's actively or passively managed because you hear from both sides them active and then them very passive and then them active again and you get me. Like there's there's no direction. There's no we want oh, this right. returning this time. There's not, it, it's hard to really get them to. So if if it's a market. If there was an actual index fund, then I'd have feel better saying that. Because again, we remember, in fact, we did, I checked that back. My client asked one time for the market returns over 10, 15, 20 years, research and find for them and send it back. But they leave my email to find it back. Boy, and it was really good returns tell, between 12 no, to 17 percent, right? Just to tell people, just to have an idea, the returns are legally required. I tell, them, yeah. I tell them that too. <laughs> the people, the people, yeah. And I, I tried. And, and I big up my MCB, I big up the MCB guy for this year specifically. But yeah, the, I, the, the reason why I, I tell people that is because I don't want them to take from me. Yeah, it's not me, me saying yeah, this. I don't want to, to say that Randy said enough for this. So, like, mm -hmm. you have to show everybody. So, I don't throw any bias. I show everybody. And I, and so I do that. People, exactly. But the, the thing people is. on YouTube now, just so they know, Danai, the people can see on YouTube now, um, one from. A couple of weeks ago, the end of May, the end of May, what the unit trusts were, and you can you can see what the year today growth rate would have been at the end of May for all of the unit trusts. Um, and the, the the dash is a negative, so that that's that's that's. What people feelings, and few things hurt as much as reality. So it, this is just an idea of what you can expect looking in terms of the last 12 months or the year today at the point that i'm telling you the end of may this is what the phones look like so it's not accidental that you hear that i struggling to try and figure out how you could really tell people that maybe them don't want to put their money in a unit just because i'm trying to be diplomatic because the truth is yo you're asking me if you should put your money in um you're asking if you should put your money in something that I know that you haven't looked to see what the returns are because if you mm -hmm. did look to see what the returns are, you would probably not be asking me that. Um, and it's it's across the board. It's across the industry. So it's negative negative growth what a negative growth rate generally <laughs> you see what the the growth rate it has to be negative growth rate if it's mm -hmm. growth rate and negative. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, i don't want to be the guy to tell you that this doesn't make sense because yeah. by all right it should make negative sense 20 percent it, it yeah it, it's this is the answer I, I i get asked the same thing i grow all the time to that i Oh, what do you think about Unitrust? And I, I share it with them. I show them whatever the latest week zone is that I have. And I go, um, these are what the returns are. You decide if this is why you're investing. Um, I know a lot of people have that question. And if you have, by the way, if you have any other questions, or any specific questions around this or anything, you're on Twitter, send a speaker, we'll see it. We'll talk you're about it. Give me this. two minutes. Or we're going to come back. Problem. Yeah. Um, but that, that's all you had your hand up in the meantime. And if anybody else, if you have any other um, remember to mute your mic, then I. And yeah, for anybody else, if you have any other questions or anything like that, send a speaker request and we can talk about it. Phil, while well, then I is out, you, you, had a, you, had a, you had your hand up earlier. Yeah, yeah, man. I think maybe one of the things that's contributing, a, a two, two points that come to mind, is the whole, one of the quote unquote conventional wisdom. Um, uh, or thought processes behind investing, investing on the market is the whole, you know, is, is the passiveness of it. So a lot, a lot of these experts don't believe that you can predict market movements beyond, you know, anything less than 10 years. So you must put down your money and mm. you ignore the fluctuations. So is it that, that they're saying, you know, we can manage to shorten? But that just sounds like a general argument against shorting. That's not necessarily anything to do with our market. If well, if even, that is the philosophy. Well, even even on the um 
even on the on the more international on the international markets, on the more popular markets, you know, it is even you know, it is there are people who view it the same as being dangerous, but I don't know if they tell you not to do it because they understand, I hope, that it's understood that for a market to be safe, you need charting. It is a right. safety mechanism for the market. It allows you to make it allows some money to be made on on the, the, the falling of share prices. I mean I, it's every market, it's, it's, it's almost a typical hedge. Right. Yes. Every every market that has not had shorting, eventually I, I shouldn't say every market, but most markets, and it is I been identified in studies that the markets that don't have shorting are the markets that tend to have crashes. It's kind of like when you have a, a pegged a pegged currency, right? You kind of invite somebody with enough money to try and test the peg. That's how you have <laughs> things like like um like was it Soros who who, who did it with the, with the British check, testing the peg? If you have enough money, you can do that, right? And that's at the level where you're doing it against central banks. See if they can defend their currency. Um, and if they can't, you make money. Yeah. In the same way, that is considered to be dangerous, but if you get it right, it can pay off extremely well. Um, in the same way, shorting is, is like that. And if the market, do, and, and to prevent that thing for currencies, you know, you stop pegging it. They have to make it free floating, which I, I'm, I'm no economist. I'm sure the economists are, are laughing in them cups about what I just said. But the point is that not having a, what's the thing that Barbados has? Like they peg their, they peg their currency against, or the US dollar, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you yeah. don't have that, then it might not be greater for your economy. You might not have the same level of control, but it is sometimes and in some circles considered to be safe or overall for your economy because it, it, reflects, thing this, yeah, it reflects yes. the reality of your market versus you controlling it yourself. Mm -hmm. um, pegging. In fact, pegging thing. Pegging is a double-edged you know, double sword kind of hedge thing. So it works on one side only. I am not inviting any any inflation from the bait stuff for of, of the US currency going a certain way. If the US currency move me, I move to. So my dollar is always going to be this. But then every single thing else that comes by that, you have to take all the bad. You can't, you can't get rid of the thing. You get, you get all the good from that situation, you take mm -hmm. all the bad from it as well. Yeah. Shorting allows you to have a situation where if, if if the actual market is crashing and all the stocks are falling you want to have shorting in that situation because then somebody can quickly implement some shorts and um the market is crashing and they're very very happy versus the market is crashing and everybody is losing their minds um yeah it is it allows two-way movement of the market it is safer it is a it is a escape valve and markets that don't have it put themselves up set themselves up for trouble so i i, I am happy for them to for jc to get it um yeah another point that was raised was the infrastructure not being in place to support proper monitoring i don't know <laughs> I, I don't know i don't know <laughs> i think nasdaq can handle it um yeah. and he did he did follow up to say that you know if short selling is allowed it should be limited to high net worth and institutional investors it already is come on man closely monitored by jsc fsc and limited to securities that meet certain criteria i think when he's talking about the high net worth stuff um it means like you know the, the government's definition of high net worth so like not just the government's official high mm, network. Yeah, man. I, I think the way again, I know what you're talking about. What you call it now? The institutional investor people. The, our institutional are that word there. Phil, you know what it is? You, you broke up with your answer. Accredited, yeah, yeah, yeah. Accredited, 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 accredited investor. Accredited investor. Accredited, accredited investors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Accredited investors. So it's only allowed for um, accredited investors, which would only be a very, very small class of people. And I, so make it only for rich people. Again. So the money that's uh, made there should only be made by, by, by rich people. Uh, I, well, I, in my view, I think, is the market not ready for it? I think the market is ready for it, being the people. Are people mm -hmm. clear on it? No, they're not as clear as they need to be, but that's what education is for. 
right? They learn as they go along. People say, learn about stocks now. You learn. Cool. Um, and some people know. It's not like we don't have people here who aren't doing this. We have loads of people doing this on the overseas markets from Jamaica. We have loads mm -hmm. of people doing it on the crypto markets from Jamaica. We have loads of people. Forex is Currency. so popular. The yep. currency market is so popular locally, you and follow. that is much, much, much more complicated than the JSC. But you think the same people who are into that can you mean for, understand? For, for it's short thing, yeah. yeah, well. That's what that's, that's it is. The, 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 <laughs> I think the, the, I think this... <laughs> it, it, it already no is. Forex involves currency pairs. Than I. That's what that's what, that's, that's what I short thing. Uh, the person I mean, who would say what I just said to you would immediately raise a red flag to me because it, it let me know that they don't actually know the <laughs> principles of what it is. Because that's why it is oh, a policy yes. period. Oh, so <laughs> oh boy. It just, yeah. That's funny. You think of it even in the stock market. Going from cash to stocks mm -hmm. because you think stocks would appreciate against things. Then at that point, you're, all, you're inherently short in cash. Because you're going into you're going away. Your the idea is that cash would then be depreciating Worthless. against the value of this company. Or in the, in the currency case, this is depreciating. This currency, the value of that. exactly. Yeah, yeah. So um, any exchange of an asset with the idea that one will go up against the other one, that's where shorting. That's that's the base of shorting. It's just saying, hey, let's see if you can make some money. I'm going here. to the, exactly. I'm going other to the fast hour. Yeah. yeah, which is why it requires somebody who owns the units and wants to keep owning the units at a set date in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The education point is a good point, though, because some of the arguments I was hearing so are like the small man going to get mashed up by the big man. They're really going to control the prices now. Who I was mean, saying that? If, if, if I, I mean, I've seen... But Look, if, I didn't see it on Twitter. Well, it's yeah, always interesting. Why would that no suddenly sense. become the case when... I mean, yeah, why wouldn't they if, know? if Exactly. <laughs> if you want the price... Why would shorting make this happen? And you have holy for money, no. you just buy it up. And if you want in the fact, price to be low and you have holy for money, you just sell it down. So that uh, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't they think that then? Wouldn't the, the people who, are, who can do this? It sounds like they'll be on your side. They want to limit the avenues. That others can do as well because yo, I want my I want my things stay this way so I can continue doing this thing. If if right. if if, so, if the person was so minded, yeah. so they but would provide again, the hedge. It could be it could be that we truly just don't understand it. So again, if yeah. everybody want to join, you want to ask about it, you want to talk about. It. If you want to tell us something, because I'm sure we might be missing a couple of points. Um, mm -hmm. Feel free to join, send a speaking request, and I will do it because I I don't like that we're all seeming to sound all the one way on this i'd love to hear from anybody else who has a an Agreed. alternate view because i it, i could just not be the, the unknowns unknowns it could just be something that i'm say, not seeing say kumbaya. Why could, yeah why it could make sense that's true yeah yeah i, I i'm not and you know me i don't believe in everybody just agreeing for agreeing sake that's that's how you lose money um yeah Oh, so I, I should point this out. There's another article I wanted to find. This is an old one from 2021. I know this article, but um, it's it's the article I wanted to find is a more recent one. And there's also a video from that came out today where Dr. Street Forest was at. I think she's at a Nasdaq conference speaking, and she's speaking mm -hmm. about the, the the Nasdaq infrastructure. I mean, it's marketing for Nasdaq, but it's good marketing because. The Nasdaq backend is strong. It powers some of the strongest exchanges in the world. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So the point here was that the, in 2021, she was saying that we intend to ensure that in 2022 we'll be live with the short selling market and it would be implemented in a cautious manner to preserve what she called the security of the market. In other words, you don't want a whole heap of investors um, losing money in it. Mm -hmm. And then losing confidence in the market. I'm trying to play devil's advocate and look at the point that, um, like, like the other points that could have been made by other people, including Doctor Steve, not Doctor, but David Stevens was making that same point about the 
if if the if the belief in the market is lost then that's lost and we know that to be true but mm -hmm. um i personally am worried about that specific point how it is how it is going to be implemented because it really it really does sound like this is the sort of thing that people jump for in jamaica limited limited and of course mm -hmm. basically only the rich yeah basically only the i was rich. worried about that yeah. them being implemented in a lame way yeah a way that only allows you you, you end up seeing that only maybe the, the the sharp brokers um like mayberry chris berry was right in the middle of this conversation of course and started it broke the news on twitter um and it seems very gung-ho about it. The market is ready and waiting a long time. Um, he's probably going to uh, probably allow a lot of his clients to, to get in there. But I don't know that. I don't know that that's, that'd be a broad-based thing. So I don't know that you're going to have like a JMMB allowing it for all the clients, right? And the guys mm -hmm. will be under, you know, it's for your own security. You can get away with a lot if you tell people you're doing it for their own security. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, ch check any airport. But it, it's. We do it. it yeah, <laughs> you. you, you cause even, I mean, even, even in medicine, we do it. Call it patient safety. Ooh, word. Ooh. What that? Yeah, tell us, doctor. <laughs> 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 what, what do you guys yeah, do? <laughs> you, can, you can implement a lot of things or, or, or not implement a lot of things in a, in a hospital or healthcare setup. By just putting it under the guise of patient safety. Ah. Mm. So it, that it, it, it's similar to to what you're saying, security and. Mm, yeah, and and you, and then yeah. you, you'd have to understand the details of whatever the thing is to be able to say whether or not that it's is actually so. that, yeah right. And so that means that you'd need greater expertise across the board, and most people would know because the point I made at the start, most people see everybody that talk about finance things as just finance things so if one person come right. out and say this is for your safety don't let them do this this is dangerous boy i might believe him and another person comes and say no it's actually yes there are dangers to it but it's not that dangerous because no so you're saying there's dangerous and him saying there's dangerous lock it off yeah man <laughs> <laughs> that's how you end up with faster horses yeah, this man had come exactly. out and asked all of us so they're going to put in his metal can right and then i'm going to put I'm going to put petroleum in the engine and then I'm going to... Yeah, no, petroleum is dangerous. It is, it is flammable, highly flammable. In fact, if you spark it, it explodes. So I'm going to run it under your feet, carry it in front of you, and then I'm going to explode spark it. Spark it. A couple <laughs> thousand yep. times. And it's going to blow out a piece of metal. And that piece of metal is going to hit another piece of metal, which is going to turn the wheels of the car. And then you're mm -hmm. going to control that with a wheel there. Where's that explosion happening? Like maybe three to five feet in front of you. Really? Yes, but... <laughs> Only if the car is moving. Well, how fast can it move? I don't know. 100 odd miles per hour? <laughs> you just need one person to come out and say, explosions in front of you? Are you crazy? No, stop it. You know, it's like going that fast? Uh, uh, why would a human need to ever go that fast? If, if, if God wanted us to move that fast, he would, he would have made us be born lightning. Uh, big up both. Um, you know, it's a good example <laughs> of that. <laughs> a good example of this is um, the ACDC thing. Current. DC, the direct current is like you can hold direct you can hold a wire that's that's transmitting direct current it won't shock you right but the ac mm -hmm. current guy had more clothes and scared the people that's the guy that was fighting against tesla you can you guys can google that tesla the person not tesla, tesla versus Tina jefferson yeah. and jefferson 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 um used to push i don't know which one he pushed but the point is one one out over the other in terms of popularity because mm -hmm. of that sort of situation where an expert came out and said no it's dangerous and showed i think i think was it what is was it jefferson was it actually jefferson i think so i, I don't uh, think okay. it was jefferson the americans nicola tesla and somebody else Edison, that's Edison, 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 Edison. Yeah, yeah. Not, why would I say Jefferson? <laughs> uh, historical white man. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Straight yeah, up. so so ACDC came out. <laughs> so they all look the I, same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was the night. That was the night who said that. Um, ACDC came out of that. And I think Edison used to like kill animals to show people that the AC current is is more dangerous. He used to he used to plug animals into the into AC current and, and electrocute them. I think he electrocuted an elephant in front of crowds to show them how dangerous AC current is. And this guy wants you to run it over your streets where your children are playing. That's how you get people to hate something that if they just have the chance to think it through, they realize it's not that bad. I I but mm-hmm. I am just shocked that after years of hearing everybody ball about how the JSC need to upgrade and they need them they even have no great features them they even they even really technologically advanced them get not, I can't believe I'm the one defending Yo, bro you know what my Jesus. mind is blown on the fact that this this think of it a couple of years ago the talk was why JSC when we can go to the US market dog because US market I can shot I can do option I, that's actually mind blowing. You know? Like it can, if, if if you could have, if you scroll back into it far enough, and not that far, you actually see them talk. You don't have to scroll back that far. There are people that have come on Brick Talk and said that the reason why they don't believe when I said that the Jamaican market is better for a Jamaican than the US market or any other market, they don't believe it. the reason why they said they don't believe it and why they prefer the US markets and the crypto markets is because of all the options and features. You have a lot of features there. A couple of weeks ago, we were saying that the US markets are bleeding. People were on this call saying that, well, there are um, there are options and derivatives and, and, and yeah, and them can show things. Yeah. And I I I agree, it's true. I, I have never said no. That is part of why it's a, a, a an advanced market. And here's a JSC saying, hey, let's become advanced also. And the same set of people turn around and saying no. I am. I'm shocked. It's like, it's like maybe we just want to complain. <laughs> As they say, faster horse, the car, please. You know, on it. Yeah. Ah, that's it. That's it. That's how it sounds like, doesn't it? Yeah. They just want to complain. Yep. The rules aren't out yet. But, I mean, somebody said to me, "Say, well, Chris Berry can't say anything more. He's just trying to make money off it. So wait, so there's, so there's money to be made. I <laughs> <laughs> <And> your vex. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> Boy, trying to, trying to. And the first like, person also said, Yeah, what, but for the rich man. <laughs> what, what man? What the person said? Yeah, but for the rich man. And I said, I But you were saying that we should restrict it to the rich man. <laughs> so what do you want? I don't understand it. If, if, it's like if. I, I honestly don't understand it. I don't understand it at all. It's like the government said they're building a highway and you say, no highway because car accidents happen on highways. But <laughs> yeah, it, it's a weird, it's a weird, weird sort of thing. I, I really am surprised that this is the reaction to it. Again, not saying that you can't lose money in um in 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 shorting, just like you can lose money on the market normally. And not saying that you can that it that it isn't inherently more dangerous than regular investing, which it is. Because there is no limit to feel, how much you can lose. But you see that we are talking about politics again, where you have to make the almost obvious disclaimer. Well, it, it is sad that my co-host does not understand the difference between politics and net politics, because... <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. She's so beautiful, though. Still. God, this is almost unfair. Anyway... Um, yeah, hold the market, then I let's talk about the market for a little bit. Let's talk all mm. things on the market so far. Oh, you like in the market this week? Half year, how's your half year been? Okay, going good. I'm uh, going well, doing really, really well. Really, really well. Uh, I've said the biggest heartbreak for me is adding more money and watching the port for watching the thing that fall, <laughs> watching all that nice, that nice juicy number fall and say, All right, cool, I've got. Go. Back again, I'm gonna make it up. Mm. We call the goal is the goal. Yeah, yeah, boy. It's not even a real heart rate moment, to be honest. Because you know what it is? It isn't that boy you made less money. You just all oh, the percentage gain. I forgot to make more money and the new money added. That's really what it is. Just that's putting clarity out there. If you're adding more money and see a percentage gain fall, don't worry, you're fine. You just 
you still made the same money you made the person is just different because it's, it's on more money now you have to go make that money ja, ja. yeah for me I, I have actually seen losses. Not uh, let me let me be clear. Then we'll just cut that little piece. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen losses in that. I've seen yeah the gains from maybe a month ago aren't the same percentage gains because some stocks that I have positions in. I mean, I still own my. Oh no no oh, yes yes some oh, def down. definitely definitely yeah down. They've been down or just not as up as before. <laughs> Down, no man, it's right. I like if people think it's down, it's down. <laughs> it, it, it's it, it's not as high as it. It's not near its peak, and that's fine lab is down also i still have a stake in the lab um for me for me for the last... i have cpj and i think goes too yeah yeah i mean yes overall i'm in profit <laughs> but I've, i saw some massive gain didn't sell all of it i didn't sell all extra i said i, I can't sell that i can't even say that i don't i don't think i sold but after mm. that massive gain has been reversed i'm chill <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been a real. I think maybe a couple of months ago we spoke about how, like, getting more, more, more adept of, of at least a level of investing. That right? we don't always often talk about this level of investing, but it's a different level of uh -huh. investing. Where you have to invest differently. You can, you can being aggressive at le, at this level of investing is different. You can still make aggressive gains, but what you have to do to make those aggressive gains is different than. You know uh, what you do at a smaller a, level of money. I love that conversation. Or, Randy, it's a yeah, no, people. Sorry, I heard you. I think I think Phil keep jumping in and out. But people, Phil is not like a guest on the show tonight where we're just interviewing him. If you want join in or if you have any questions or something not clear or you want to make a point to send a speaking request. Don't make Phil take up all of the all of the time. If nobody takes send a speaking request though, Phil Phil is free to do what he want. But that's what that sound was tonight. It was it was Phil jumping in. Oh. You're saying something though. Oh you no, know, so I think it, it's a lot of it like the same conversation I had before around skipping lessons that the skipping some early lessons on the on the smaller money, growing the bigger money. Mm -hmm. Like my clients are starting with bigger money, right? Mm. I find like just getting it's to me getting certain returns, you you almost have to have a certain understanding of the market at a certain level. If you're going, mm -hmm. if, you, if, if you're talking at a certain level of money and you're brand new to it and you're going to be aggressive, one is more risk because, yo, one, <laughs> you put money in a stock and, well, there's more for you to lose just on, if you go from that angle. But the thing, just, just moving, you want to go in a stock and you want certain returns out, like you, you, you leave early. So then your aggression looks different because you have to make more plays maybe because, boy, the 70% 70, 70 stock, if you if you start leaving at the peak, there is only so much way to get thirty or forty percent outside for real, right? So then, a hundred percent go different. You have a full seventy percent movement. Your average your average gain across the stock when you fully jump out is forty percent. If I go find a new stock with all this money again, taking all this new risk, cause it's more money to lose more again. It's, it's a whole lot to juggle across. It. So just just not having an understanding at that level, you set yourself. It's almost like you're setting yourself up for just. Or it's a bumpy ride, right? better say it like that. What well, you know what? Yeah, it's a bumpy ride. Right? And it might be scarier because the mm -hmm. mistakes or the losses are much bigger. Yeah. See you see that you see that boy you don't? The difference between don't buy hundred grand versus one mil. Or you've never actually lost a hundred grand on a thing before. But your one percent movement down is a hundred grand, bro. So mm -hmm. what do you do? Yeah. Yeah. So when you when you come in and you, you, have, you, you, tell, you tell people to operate in percentages, but that's what that's what it is. And it, mm -hmm. but then them down point five percent is a hundred grand. And you have to explain to them to yeah, hundred grand is a lot of money. But it's not a lot, it's not a lot, it's not, it's not a lot of money relative to your portfolio. And that's mm -hmm. what you have to go with. Yep. Just not just not understanding that. <laughs> Can I imagine I I was, we said before on this, the first time you saw a certain level of a loss. That used to be all the money on your portfolio. You know, even jump. Like you point out, hmm, that's interesting. That the fact that I can oh, be down yeah. by that much, that that much money, and still it's not feel a certain does. way about it. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. that used to be all your money, but mm -hmm. you but know, money. even at that level, you were get that you're that level, you were you were point five percent down. You were five percent down. You were two percent down. 
it's smaller levels and you saw it over and over. So it, the, 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 the thinking in percentages now by the time you reach here, so second nature, you understand that that's how the stocks move. If you never get out of that, being a hundred grand down, Jesus, being a being million dollars when I'm buying more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Somebody, somebody can have a great thing and it's, it's before it's time. It's not ready to move yet and it's slipped 10%. And that 10% on your $10 million position, whoops, that's a million dollars. And you have to say, boy, I'm going to get this next bag of money. And I never lose, and I never understand and say, this is how it works. I have to go buying more. And then, you, you know, immediately they never do that and then keep themselves later when when that 10 million is, is 20 million, and I'm saying, you know, so I'm going to put 5 million behind it when it, when it drops. <laughs> yeah. That's that rough. And I don't know how to tell somebody, yo, I don't know how to, I can't bridge a gap because meaning I can't, I can't give you those lists. Meaning, you have to invest where, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I want, oh, I can't go, all right, you know, say this, I, I can tell you what, I can tell you, you know, but you never, you never go through it. Mm -hmm. And I, I said, it's, it's a conversation I hate the most, the risk conversation I have with a lot, with many clients at the start of the most clients, every, almost every client. And they said not really being risky. I mean, and I think of risk conversation. It sounds a certain way when persons when persons want certain things. <laughs> so if 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 you're, if you're not being really risky, I'm having risk conversation. And then risk conversation doesn't sound like wow, you know. It sounds like hey, we're not really taking any strong risks here because yeah, the last thing they can see, but you're a long time. You know those nice things. It sounds good. Like, it does. It, it sounds. It, it sounds like it's so. It's it's it, if 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 you're if you're if you have low risk goals, then the risk mm -hmm. conversation sounds like I'm telling you, I'm reassuring you. But yeah, we should be fine here. We're not really looking at things that the gain we want to make. It's, I don't know. But if you have very aggressive goals, then the risk conversation sounds like I'm discouraging. It sounds like, bossy, you can lose a bag of money in your certain for understand that. <laughs> right? I, and there's no two ways about that. To me, I can't, I can't, I can't send somebody into something and not tell them, say, yo, you know, say, you can read. I, I can't send somebody into a certain type of investing and not tell them, say, yo, if this goes wrong, you then it goes that. wrong, wrong. Yeah. Right, and the kind, of, and I try to tell you some of the ways it can go wrong and all of that. But if it, if you want a certain thing, I give him again, uh, risk reward. If you want a certain rewards, then you have to go take the risk for it. And I have to tell you that, and it sounds like I'm discouraging. I even I have to give a disclaimer after and say, oh, I'm not trying to discourage. I'm just thinking, oh, this is what it is, right? But yeah, it is. A and this is a grow up look to me. I tell a lot of these because the grow up, you understand a lot more. And make sure you apply the principles. Or whatever. This is you just covering yourself with understanding the market more so you can understand exactly how things move and all that niceness. Sure, but Jesus. Uh, the start with a bag of money? Boy. <laughs> In fact, yeah. a client of mine happens to be the son of the guy that I, I, I mention him all the time and say, oh, one of the persons that get me into the investing thing. And I first started, I talked to him, and he had told me that he's, he, Bought two horses from the market and after what he he told no, his say son that, say that, that properly say that say that to people properly they him do what oh he started investing on the stock market back in the day he was working at a bank and mm. from the money he made on the market purely from gains he bought two horses all right there's many people here I, I, I know I don't. They make two house money they make house money from the market <laughs> two houses yeah. buy out of the market. Yeah, I don't, I don't do a good job of having people understand what's truly possible on the stock market. And some, even when I talk to people, even I talking to some finance people up to this week, and in in meetings, and you you can tell that they don't know, and they know that they're in the finance space in Jamaica, and they're making all kinds of moves, and they're making money in, in the spaces that they're making money, you know. And they don't understand that, yo, you're not, you're not doing anything yet. Like you think you're doing something great and you get the prestige, but you're, you're joking. Like you, you can't, mm -hmm. you can't hold a candle to the, to the people who are serious about the market. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't know. I don't care to have them know. I don't care if they know or not, but I want people to know that it's not like experts that can do it in the market. You have regular people just like you. In the market, and guess, in the king. <laughs> his story is interesting because when he did it, the mm. experts he was working at a bank. Mm. His account was at the investment arm of the bank. 
And you know, as a bank employee, you're under a certain scrutiny because you know, embezzlement and whatever, whatever. So then this guy goes and buys yeah. he goes and buys two houses. He must be stealing. <laughs> Cause him salary in have, have, have those two house thing there. He's not taking a market mortgage or buying none. So how the hell him have two house? Yeah. As him buy. And he call in a meeting, whatever, whatever, experts in not no go so he can't go so boss worried because oh this guy been possibly stealing from us and he said no man show them the account like been there the whole time showing the moves in mech and they were dumbfounded come work every day <laughs> a normal guy you know pay him nowhere near enough to do this but he pay himself yeah even i i i remember when i was doing my nine to five days yeah. even now some of the people just don't know don't believe don't understand people don't understand and i know i do a bad job of selling it because i'm not going to come on here and like you're not going to see me throwing the money or wearing pajamas or anything like that but i just i it it is more powerful than you think it is the most powerful opportunity it's the best thing for you to get into no matter what you're doing no matter where you are in life no matter what your business is not anything else you do it complements it mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I started. I was to say, his son started investing, and what mm -hmm. he did was his advice to him. All right, you have this smaller money. You get we get some bigger money into the game, but start start with this small money and go learn it. Go make the mistakes. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So he sent him out there with that smaller money, and him do he moves and jump onto this and find him reasons why. Okay, but just trying to learn the market more. And we start, we start investing bigger money, but in doing it in a more safe way, so you can just come into that under, come into the understanding more, so you can grow and read us. And by the time you get to that, imagine, imagine when you start touch, imagine when you start feel, get a feel for it and understand the bigger money you can do, and start making the moves across the board. That's gonna be a dangerous, yeah, money. There's only two, two more hours. Yep, more than two more hours. <laughs> Because if you have the real estate, real estate is a rich man's game. And if you are a rich man, a rich person's game. And if you know the market and you have real estate, that's when real estate actually becomes powerful. Good yes, Lord. Sir. Good Lord. Remember again, uh, I think a tweet that hit a lot of people was Chris Berry's tweet about him selling his house mm. to, go, to go deeper into the market with the money. And then he bought a house. And then, you know, you have a wife and two kids and whatever. And then very quickly, wife still like too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. So big deals there. And then he and then turns around and buys a house from the money on the market. Yeah. And I know uh, yeah, the market is is a powerful, powerful thing. And powerful, I don't believe it's a, yeah, I, it's more advanced than anybody else is thinking so that the Jamaicans can get any exposure to it or whatever. I, I shared to the people who are on Twitter, I, I shared the, 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 the tweet with the video of Dr. Street Forest at the, um, at the, at the NASDAQ video. So if you, if you want to, to, um, look at it, you can, I mean, you know, we can. Got your role. Marlene. Well, yeah, well, I, take, people... I take some solace in what we've always said our mm -hmm. own all market being at a certain level mm -hmm. meaning in this development in where the people are it's very similar to we'll start off the we'll start off many other markets back when they when when they were in their infancy yes and the alpha the talk for them was the same look just look on mr sir sir buffett and all, all the talk against him all the thoughts he had to deal with and that's what the market, the talk around the market back then. Remember, he talked about convincing thing there, convincing his first set of investors, the doctors and the lawyers he, he, he was friends with, to invest mm -hmm. with him. And a bag of them said no, because this market thing we are talking about. And think of it, we are, I think, a whole thing there, where we are in Jamaica still, where doctors mm -hmm. and lawyers are seen as the rich guys. Yeah, and, and the young lock, the young doctors and the young lawyers are very annoyed by that because they're, <laughs> they're, but they're like they're not think, seeing it. But them, them rich man, and them, 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 mm -hmm. them, them fool themselves. <laughs> yeah, but then at that that point, that vested 
for for him telling him doctor friend and lawyer friend that they are nothing only friends you know like friends are friends there's a good amount of people shopping it too mm-hmm. and these were the rich guys saying all this what is this guy talking is what is guy talking about making money so i'm a doctor i'm a lawyer i already made the money right <laughs> so think of it think of where it is now everybody knows the finance guys are the money guys now think well generally speaking uh, you, you know, of course i don't know i mean in that's what i mean but what i meant was certain levels of finance guys. <laughs> yeah yeah. But even then, they make, make a nice pay at certain levels. So, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, America. America. Yeah, even in Jamaica, the finance guys in Jamaica make nice salary. Oh, they make, they, they might, yeah. they definitely make nice. Like, yeah, relative. Yeah, nice. Relative to, to the general salary, order, of course. Of course, they make mm-hmm. great salary. And finance companies make, make Good profits. Um, wonderful profits. Yeah, it's, it's, it, there's no question in that. Um, big up Dr. C.J.A. Smith, Dr. Colette Smith, who, who shared a quote from this book, he used to invest in common stocks. You can see it's a very old book. Um, mm-hmm. and uh, I've shared that to the, the Twitter space also speaking about what short sales are and, um, explaining it and the risk behind it and just just generally how it works you can see it's very old my, my favorite book on investing at least directly about stocks is confusions um their confusion is or whatever i can't pronounce it um it's it's a, a book from 1688 and it also has sharting in there and um it, nothing new is in the market any market nothing new there's nothing new under the sun and mm. if they could understand it in 1688 and that guy could Joseph De La Vega could. Uh, we can understand it in 2022. It's not that complicated. I, I assure you. Somebody... Uh, 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 it's the stock market being a stock market. Mm-hmm. I think we think I think we forget that it's the market is an extension of of an already pre existing idea, just on the basis of. Yo, we, we can trade companies with a private or with a public. The public does a designation and, and a listing and blah, 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 blah. That's a whole, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's another layer we put on top of. Hey, we, me want to buy an air company, you sell me some shares in it and you don't this all right? And I think I think we often forget that, that the market isn't this thing by itself that, that that's far-fetched, that's above regular people's understanding. Everybody knows that, yo, man, you can invest in a taxi. Me and my bridging can buy, put, put together. Buy a taxi, put it on the road. That's a business we own. Yeah, I can open a corner shop on Randy Veranda if you want the space feet. You just buy the thing, them and people walk up and buy from you. And cool, me buy X amount of the goods. Randy buy X amount of the goods, and we split the money. However, we split the money. Yeah. So to, to believe that the, the, the stock, the, the market existing, then makes it way more complicated and now you know go so. <laughs> yeah yeah and, and there's something elitist in that idea but that, that, that i'm so used to that in in um yeah i'm so used to it in 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 every sphere in jamaica that I'm not surprised that it's in finance also. And you hear it also, you hear it around IPOs. People, some people don't like IPO, you know, quite popular. Everybody, come on, everybody wants it. The flippers, right? We add, and if the stock's getting popular, some people don't like it. And if 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 more people, if some people talk about something that then, then other people. It, I just want it there for regular people so our regular people can get it you can set the thing up in such a way that it naturally has certain controls around it so that you're not putting the people doing it at risk too much risk i should say not that you're not putting at risk risk is inherent in it risk is a hallmark of profit but you don't want it 
to go truly wild. So I'm not saying that there should be no controls. And and that that's the other thing that I suspect will be said. That you know, like there is some cause for there to be no controls. I'm making it clear that I don't think that there shouldn't be any controls. I think there should be controls. I think there should be limitations placed on it. But I think that the access should be open to anybody who can prove that the sign to say they understood the risk and they took it on knowingly, and they're gonna work within a system that the risk is the risk is limited for them. And the brokers have a huge role to play in that also. So the broker isn't going to... Just like, oh, your broker won't give you too much margin. Right? Your broker isn't going to give you mm -hmm. too much margin because then you'll be too close to a margin call. Margin calls mm -hmm. aren't new to the, to the, um, the market either. Um, and, and they also protect themselves by managing the, the, the ECL exposure that way. But it, it's... it's it, it would be... It, I suspect that if... I suspect that if you asked a lot of the same people whether or not margin lending just just straight lending of cash against your stocks to invest in the market if that should be allowed a lot of them would say no not realizing that it is already mm -hmm. long doable just like how some people in the market have access to shorting they get, mm -hmm. get a shorting as um a bedroom repeated me saying the other day uh yeah so i mean I just want it to be open up for the whole market. The people are saying that most people can't do it or the market isn't ready. I don't, but the market is not ready for shots. How would you know? Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> as, as, as my rant on that, um, I see David keep popping in and out of the space. You know, um, David, I, I, my mind tells me say you have something that you want to say about it. If you do, you can send a speaking request. You know, we'd love to hear your, your views on shorting on the JSC. Matter of fact, I actually want to hear that from you, David. That's a long time. It's a long time since I've actually wanted to hear you speak deeply on a subject. So if you want to, if you can, join us and, and um, you can tell us about it. Uh, outside of that, though, when you think it might happen, then I... Twenty nineteen. Twenty nine. Hold on, Randy. Uh, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. This year, how long we've been hearing this year? I've been hearing it for a long, 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 long time. The JC always tries. They're very optimistic. They promise the best. They want the best. Um, they're expecting the best every year, and. Yeah, I mean, big them up. They, they do it little by little, right? We got the JSC, the, the J Trader improvements, some of them, and I hear more are coming. And I believe I when I first heard about this, I heard November, and now I've heard December. I think mm -hmm. I would say, yeah, I want to say by end of year, but well, I hate that timeline because it sounds very, very open. But why I say by end of year because I figure that the, the mention that Chris Berry mentioned in his tweet is. Because it's so much soon. Mm. Yeah, so I'm talking about that all sounds like a this year thing or a very soon thing. I don't know what stage the brokers are with it, meaning if they may be testing whatever system or whatever, whatever the JC could do it. I know that's typically how it goes. The brokers test whatever new implementation the JC has for a while. So I don't know how long they've been doing it. But the fact it's mentioned recently like that sounds like a this year thing. How soon this year? No idea. But then we hear this year before. Well, November, December. I think the article I wanted to find that I'm not, I'm not getting it up clearly, but the, the article I wanted to find, I remember her speaking or was November. said. I mentioned it being tied to her wanting to do it before she retires, and I believe she retires this year. So, I mean, I don't know. Uh, no. No, it actually was oh, welcome, article welcome, to my welcome, editor. Welcome, David. Welcome, David. What's up? Like, no, I was no, for you earlier. Why you never say nothing then? <laughs> you this guy else. I'm just, I'm just passing through. And what's up, David? Church. How are you doing? How are you doing? How are you doing? You know what, what's going on? Everything good? Oh yeah, no, I'm I'm recovering, good, recovering. Yeah. Come on. That's a, that's a half thing, but I've been, I've been uh, a no bit problem, no problem. last month. But yeah, oh, no, so she's that. supposed Hold to return next man, year. Hold on, man. What do you have to go to Dr. Street for us? She can talk for herself when we talk to her. You you talk to me. How do you, you feel about the shorting thing? It's a good thing because it creates a new dynamic in the market. It's no longer just dividends and 
you holding a stock for it to go up. You can make money both ways. Mm-hmm. It's a good thing. You think of shorting as a good thing. So you are in You're pro shorting. You're 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 pro the JC implementing it. Shorting is a good thing. The way the JC implements it, that's another story. Well that's a story yeah, I'm really. asking you about. Yeah. Well, do, do, do you know how they will implement it? That I can't confirm as yet. But you're right, Dana. You were right about you know the brokers testing up before it reaches the public. Because someone who reached to, to talk to me the other day said, you know, the JC are talking to the brokers from earlier back in the first quarter about it have been shorting ready by June. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> we know how that timeline go already. Oh, but no. they were the brokers. Already, gone. <laughs> I mean, it gone already. That's what I mean. Yeah, but they're the brokers. They're pretty broke as internally though still in terms of testing and everything. Well they must. Because it, it, it is it's not the JC that is doing it. It's not the that JC sh- thing. The JC is just providing the infrastructure for it. But mm-hmm. the brokers are the ones who will have to source and hold the units. The brokers are the ones who you'll really be who, who Inter- be yeah, the, 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 the for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the JC yeah. is just yeah, the JC provides the highway, but they don't provide the, the, the cars or the or the buildings or whatever. But I'm asking mm-hmm. you, are you pro the JSC implementing shorting? No, trust me. Actually, maybe that is something that we should have. have. And the so, day, you the mentioned yes? it earlier. No, no, you, yes? I said, I'm pro for it. And you mentioned it. Uh, if mm-hmm. the brokers have you sign up for this clue, saying you understand the risk. Then I think they have to. No, they have to, but at the same time, the reality is persons are going to make money and lose money. And that I mean, goes for the market. Exactly. That, at, the sa- at, the, at the same time, the quote unquote risk doesn't necessarily get any less bit less or greater with international shorting because if you buy a stock at t- for example ten dollars it goes to five dollars, you still lose money. If you short a stock at ten dollars, it goes to fifteen dollars. It still lose money. Yes, but it, if if you short a stock at ten dollars and it goes to thirty dollars, you lose more money than you thought you could have lost if you'd simply bought it at ten and it fell to zero, which also does that. True. No, I, I, I believe we should have shortened, but as you mentioned, you know, education really needs to be done on the broker's part to be honest well ed- education needs to be done all around so you are actually for the implementation of shorting on the jsc yeah totally wow and and you're for it for the retail investor not for just high net worth people no no i don't believe that we should keep going that route of restricting certain financial products to high net worth investors because the reality is you being an accredited investor doesn't mean you're actually a sophisticated investor. Ooh, David. No, but it is the truth. It is the truth. What My you have things, know. few things offend as much as the truth, David. <laughs> I never know. <laughs> no, you, it's the, you, it's the you. truth. Oh yes, but that don't matter. That, that that's usually what get people vex. You know that. No, but the reality is, although you might be an accredited investor, you might not be the person who can make your best decisions. At the same time, your advisor might have an input, but it might not be the best thing for you either. What's the, tell the people the, um, the requirements for an accredited investor in Jamaica. So in Jamaica, it is $10 million in net income over two years or a net worth above $50 million. I don't think we have that restriction as in the US, where you cannot use your primary residence as part of your asset base. Mm. So it's actually easier to become a accredited investor in Jamaica than it By is. Miles, because in the US, I believe it is a $200,000 or $250,000 in net income or 300000 jointly, you have with somebody else, or a million dollars in net worth. And if we bring 10 million JMD down, and this is over two years down to the USD, that's about $66,700 US versus $200,000 US in net income. Mm-hmm. 
And this is about two years versus a, a, a smaller timeline in the US. Mm -hmm. I, so it sounds like everybody I, agree. I am shocked that David agrees with that. Literally shocked. No, the pro, no we, we have pro, seen it. Shocked and pro. No, no, but Randy, you know, any person who actually sees and sits down. So, over the last two years of COVID, I'm working at a lot more companies, offers and bag of things, right? I'm basically working in the background. Mm -hmm. And the reality is I've seen and heard of things. And the reality is, even though you might have a lot of money, and you quote unquote consider an accredited investor by legal definitions, it doesn't mean you're a sophisticated investor. The reality is, some persons are good at what their talent is. They might have a lot of money, but they delegate their capital to somebody who they trust can sensibly manage it. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, a creative investor isn't on the basis of how oh, good an investor you are. You know? I mean, it, the, the whole reason it was brought up was, hey, these people are out of money, so they can take more risk. So basically, if you're out of money, you, you can stand to lose more. So you can do these certain things. No, and I, got the, I get the principle, though, still in essence. Mm -hmm. Because we really and truly would not want, as you would say, some retail investors or perhaps the Jamaican population suffering certain losses from certain events, because I think we cannot remember the Palmyra case on uh, Montego Bay. I believe it's Montego Bay or along the north coast, which eventually became a surgical hotel. Mm -hmm. What about it? No, so I remember the Palmyra Hotel, you know, where they were developing the, the Palmyra Hotel, and I think it was a spa as well. And a lot of capital went in for many persons, and yet persons even in the US, like I think it was a security guard as well putting in 100,000 US dollars into the project and it didn't pan out as planned. And mm -hmm. out of every dollar that he invested, I think they said they wouldn't give him like 20 to 20 cents back on each dollar in terms of recovery on funds. Mm -hmm. But that can't be, that's real estate. And real estate, <laughs> everybody knows. <Yeah. laughs> everybody knows that. Yeah. But so it's, it's, that it's, it's, it's funny. Because hold on, just to I clear that up, the investors got back only 20% of their initial money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, got, I can't find the article after this, if anything, but I remember reading about the case and actually speaking to persons who were, you know, uh, in this case, finan I shouldn't say financial advice, but, you know, persons who were on particular size of the transaction in terms of the whole primary deal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the way the accredited investor thing works is just that you cannot be shocked certain investments. So basically, certain things can only be brought to an accredited investor in certain ways. So like, uh, what is it, what is it? Prospectus for, so like you bring in thing that you're doing a private raise and mm -hmm. do, a, do a whole prospectus, you register with the FSC, mm -hmm. then at this point, only thing that, only accredited can touch it. Ah, God. I can't remember the exact thing there. But it isn't that, yo, I can invest in, in, in if Phil come with a company, you know, that because then I broke him, can invest in it. It's not like that. So then I can still invest in Phil company and Phil lose and, and sell Phil company mash up because I'm going to this, this hotel real estate deal. Then, you know, you know what's up? Then I from investing in it. It's just that him, he couldn't come to me at a certain level. Then, yeah, it's public. The things to anyone say, cash put certain things all to the public. You can only yeah. put to the thing there. Yes. So generally speaking, like the FSC is there to protect the public. But so if a company is going to put something in front of the public, they have to meet certain criteria with that thing. They have to mm -hmm. put together certain documentation. They have to go to a certain mm -hmm. level of explanation. Well, that's of why I'm, disclosure. That's why our prospectors, yes. yeah. That's why our prospectors have so much information. But there are yeah, things so that if, can be offered to accredited investors without that can, level uh, of um, yes. disclosure because those investors are expected to be able to stand a lot more risk and can mm -hmm. afford to and have and are expected to have a bit more savvy a bit more understanding mm -hmm. of of the thing um and that's the point behind accredited investor um yeah funny enough mm -hmm. i don't know if the levels you mentioned david are the levels that i know of but uh, say them again for the people listening or watching Oh, the definition of accrediting investor here in Jamaica? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So $10 million in net income over two years or a net worth of $50 million Jamaican dollars. 
Mm. That's funny, you know, Randy. Cause Why? I, yeah, a lot of people meet that that income requirement. They didn't. Uh, make ten million over the last two years. Yeah. 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 I mean, not, not, I mean, I'm not saying majority of Jamaica, but it's a good amount of people. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just of counting Jamaica. heads, yeah, yeah. it's a good amount of people. Two yeah. years, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's actually a, a large, I never thought of that. That's actually a large yeah. swathe of people. And um, our net worth of, what you said? 50, 50 million? 50 million. 50 million yeah. And you can use your house? Then and you, you can know, use so. your house. I need to check yeah. back on them. I'm checking that right now because I said, and in the US, they do allow it. You can use a primary mm-hmm. residence, but I have to check for Jamaica. Give me a second. Yeah, if, if, if you can use your household and pay off your mortgage, you know, so, 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 that can do a good damage towards towards that. Yeah. That's, and a good amount of people mm-hmm. have, the, have the rental property there, so they don't pay off a good amount of it, kind of thing. Good amount of them primary residence. If you can combine that, then yeah, I think a good amount of people. A lot more than I, th- I would initially think would fit that bill. If I never look at it, if I never actually look at that thing, look at the boy, the numbers. You, you wouldn't think a credit investor can be that broad, uh, that broader base. Exactly. It, it can mm-hmm. actually be a, a significantly larger base than, than most people might think. Than, it, than it's own like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And if you have a job that, let's say over the last two years, it's only pay you, your, your paycheck is three or four million a year, three and a half million a year before tax. So over well, the last also, two years, you got paid $7 million. If you have a hustle at any point in the last two years that also gave you $3 million in income, you can qualify. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, while David looks that up, for the people looking on YouTube, there is this tweet from Aisha Selden who she explains shorting much better than I did because I wasn't thinking stupidly of me. I didn't think to how I was going to explain to you guys before we, we did it here. I've done it on the podcast. If you listen to the old uh, um, Brick Talk episodes, you can hear it. But she said, if you borrow your sister's new skirt and sell it online for $100 because you think it's going to go on sale next week, and it does go on sale next week, and so you buy it back n- next week for $45. Same skirt online from Sheen, $45. The one that you sold for to $100. The difference between those two, the $55, you get to keep it because that's mm-hmm. your money and your sister didn't care about that money. She might not even have known about that money. All she wants to know is that your know, next week when she's ready for her skirt, she has sure, her skirt. She and so mm-hmm. she has her skirt back and you have $55 extra. That's how you short a stock. And then she goes on to explain how it goes. So your sister would be the brokerage company. Her skirt would be the stock that you think is going to go up. And the risk there is if that if you're wrong about the stock and the skirt becomes a hot commodity and the price climbs to 600, you still have to find that skirt back. You sign that you're gonna find that skirt back. So find that skirt back, which is why people say limited to people that can afford that level of risk because you went in expecting that you're gonna make a profit. So you're gonna get enough money to keep money for yourself and buy back the skirt. And now you end up only having having to find money just to pay back the skirt aka just to give your brokerage company the value that you signed that you were going to give them um then i an interesting point that somebody on twitter is is that uh, not sorry not on twitter somebody on youtube raised was that george scarlett said that it it gives a ja version of gamestop possibility all right gamestop possibility yeah, um yeah yolo yo to the moon yolo to the moon um the institutional investors short and fewer public done them like it you the possibility of a short squeeze could happen right mm-hmm. if the market gets to that point you could have the situation of a short squeeze where maybe a broker has shorts to a certain level and it's publicly known and the institution the, the retail investors run and buy up those shares so that at the point when the broker has to find it, the shares to cover their short, they literally cannot find the shares because mm-hmm. the people aren't selling them, um, mm-hmm. which is the core of the of the Wall Street bets AMC GM, um, GameStop situation. For those who know the more mm-hmm. technical side of it, mm-hmm. so maybe maybe the real risk is from the broker saying, "Yo, we don't want this because we could get." <laughs> Because <laughs> it's the brokers that really got screwed, and those who understand that situation, it's really the broker that was being screwed. Bro, they might never be shallow. So, 
<laughs> if I saw Chris Berry speaking against it, I might say, hmm, maybe that's possible. But he's the person actually talking for it. He doesn't seem to be against uh-huh. it at all. Um, yeah. And and I think he's created the air on Twitter very clearly where if I believe that if he was against it, we would we would we he would show it very clearly. Mm-hmm. I think he, he's created that impression on Twitter at least that you can be sure that if he's against something, there'll be a tweet coming out about it. Um mm-hmm. so who knows? Maybe the rest of the brokers are like, yo, listen, maybe I can go take uh, on it, that kind it, of risk. We it, don't it, want it's that funny. Kind of hit. Because I, I would say the other brokers as as be more in danger because well you, you've already spoken and maybe take the market more serious than most so mm-hmm. than all so <laughs> yeah I, I i i would say the more sa- the, 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 i would expect them to be more savvy around doing around any risk they take there than the other places me too I, it, it, I am. I. I can tell you one thing. I am very, very, very. I hope it comes. I think it's coming. Um, what I saw, the point that David initially had jumped in on, was that what I saw. I saw it being linked around Doctor Street's far as possible retirement, and it being something that maybe she wants to do ahead of her retirement. What was that point that you had, David? So my editor did an article recently with her where she said that she wants to end up initiatives before she's re- required to retire next year. Mm-hmm. Went, okay. Yeah, so, you know... So it's not this year, it's next year? No, it's not this year, so it's next year. You're correct, Danai. Uh, well, before her, she retires is every point from right now till she retires. Yeah. Then. And when does she have to retire, David? It's next year. I'm not sure where, when in the year, but it's it's definitely next year. She said it's in it's January one. Suppose what? Suppose it's January one. Well, she has a she had a deadline she wants to meet. Well, then that would mean that the thing would have to happen this year, would it not? Correct. So how can we say that? No, no, no. It's not right if we don't know when she's when when she's um supposed to retire correct but then but uh, well, yeah, I tried back a while ago so I don't see anything on the FSC's exit distribution table st- stipulating that you can't use your property in this case your primary residence as part of your net worth I hope they don't get any ideas well I suspect they might get ideas. I know. I know that ideas. I, I suspect they might get ideas. Um, I suspect that it might come out and it might be very limited only to to the funds. Who uh, did you look back at? Did you, did you quote the article that came out today? Uh, what article is that? It was an article about the junior market, but I copied and pasted a particular point which Miss Street Forest spoke about. Give me a second. She spoke about what you're talking about an observer article that came out today gleaner it was about shorting oh so she said give me a second right here we are targeting december 22 2022 all things being equal investors will be allowed to short eligible securities based on the requirements set by the jsc the specifics regarding the eligible stocks for shorting will be released at a later date. So restriction from go. <laughs> so basically, some companies technically might not qualify from the get-go to be shorted. Mm. What would stop a company from qualifying? That's that what we don't know as yet. Yeah, but we can, well... Can well, speculate. What do you think? I mean, we can speculate, and we can speculate very sensibly also. Um, you've heard the things being said. What what do you think could be some of the points that they would use to stop or 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 restrict determine restrict restrict a company from being part of it? Well, what? Hmm. Well, probably free float, but let me just check and see what there the restriction. Hold on, why you say free float? You don't have to check somewhere else. Think up, go think through the thing that you're saying, because now you're thinking. Why is a free float? No, so what I was thinking about the free float was that it's also an example of PBS, Productive Business Solutions, right? 
the most tightly held stock on the JSC from a quantitative standpoint. More than 99% of the company is held by the top 10 executives and directors. Mm -hmm. So there's literally almost no shares on the market. Mm -hmm. So say if you decide you want to short the stock and the persons who do own a few shares decide they're going to just hold on to their shares, you, you just can't uh, repay the broker about the shares. In this case, if it hurts the stock. Wait, why, why can't you repay the broker the shares? You can buy by the security basically, which is a, which will be the will be the issue. Why can't you, you, you? So you own the security? No. So in, in the case of so let us say you shorted PBS for example, how and I, I said that it? how did I initiate the short? You would have borrowed the securities. So uh, I got some of the shares. Yes. And then I I did what with those shares. I sold them. You sold them to somebody who was willing to buy at the time. All right. And in order to re in order to fulfill the uh, ability to, to repay the broker back the shares, you would mm -hmm. in essence have to buy back the security. Mm -hmm. What I yeah. pointed out was, what if um, the case? So oh, what does the shareholding of the the larger shareholders have to do with that situation? Because if I sold the shares, I can buy them back, no? No, and, and the right, shareholders, the problem was pointing out. I was speaking to just the general free float of, of the stock in this case. I was saying more than 90 percent of the company is held by a, 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 a small stuff persons, right? Mm -hmm. They have less than 1% in the market. Mm -hmm. I was saying, you short the stock, and let us say that the persons who already own whatever shares are remaining, they said they don't want to sell, or they said they're going to sell they're going to put it at a higher price. So let us mm -hmm. say you shorted... A hundred units. Hundred units mm -hmm. at uh, one dollar fifty for example. One dollar, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let us say there's somebody is selling, but they're only selling eighty units at let us say ninety cents. Mm -hmm. You're still going to be short twenty units. Correct. So that's, that's one consideration I was just thinking of off the top of my head. So then that would mean that the limitation on that stock or on any stock then would have to be linked to maybe the level of general float available the level of general float available and i wouldn't say liquidity i just say the level of yeah the same the, yeah that general another consideration could be and the consideration no, could be the not, number of days on. traded let's, let's, hold on a man let's not run on it's the liquidity in other words the general amount of shares available for purchase at any given time in the stock on the market correct correct so then if we're putting together an idea of putting together a framework for shorting locally we'd say that maybe the total short available across the industry on every on on any stock should be x percent of the float over the last x or y period of time right yep you see how you and me just come up with a framework there just now? Yeah. And so when you're, when you're, if I can come up with that, you think maybe an expert can come up with a better one? That's impossible. So then it's not, I'm saying this to say, there is no reason necessarily why every stock shouldn't be included. It might mean that mm -hmm. the float available on a stock, on a specific company might be much lower than on another one. So PBS so is a great so example. The 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 um the the look look at the queue right now. There's one nineteen thousand eight hundred and seventy um shares available in PBS, right? And the average daily volume over the last year for PBS is like fifty three thousand trades, fifty three thousand units. So maybe you want to limit the shorting of pbs to maybe or ten thousand ten thousand units that's as much as it could be so basically then, a fifth of the, of the trading vol of the average trading volume over the last year you see how something like that would make sense and it would be a rule that could then be implemented across the board for every company and then we would just naturally know that some companies there's not a lot of room to short them and if that's and if that's a centrally if that's a centrally managed thing, so like 
if I got the 10,000 units on PBS at my broker at, um, let's say, at my broker at Sajikor, then Danai at NCB, Danai is not at NCB, but Danai, for example, at NCB could not get any shorting on um, PBS because it would be above, it, it, the, the allowed, the allowed um, shorting limit in terms of units is already taken up and that's across the industry, right? That's one opportunity, that's one thing you could do. Or then maybe another broker could go, well, no, listen, we have a certain amount of shares in PBS that we have. We happen to be holding a million PBS shares and so we are the ones willing to lend that or lend a percentage of that and so that might increase it you see how that gets to the point that somebody else was saying about um it increases liquidity it also introduces and makes more of a case for market makers it truly, and that's been, it truly that's been, levels up the market i cannot understand people balling against it sorry sorry <laughs> did it. It, it, no don't worry it, don't worry it blew uh, my mind it blew my mind and so it, for example when I use my interactive broker's account, right? I use something called a stock yield enhancement program where my broker will lend up my securities and have collateral on my account just in case the person can re deliver back the shares and are interested in my broker. So that's another way for even the investors who only rely on dividend income to now get income from persons uh, borrowing their shares. Yeah, so uh, maybe you weren't here earlier when I pointed that out. That's another thing that I said that it, it benefits the market also because if you own shares in a company, just like David just said, yeah, you can put it up and allow the broker to lend them out so, and, and you get a percentage of the... Of the contract the, fee. Get, yeah, the contract fee. Yeah, you know, the, the, somebody on Twitter, not on Twitter, I keep saying Twitter, somebody on YouTube asked, how does it benefit the person lending the shares? You know, will they get a, will they get a premium? Yeah. Pretty much you get a small broker. money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get a small money every time. Imagine being able, if we had that over the last 10 years and somebody was lending out their carb cement shares, they might have gotten income from the lending of their carb cement shares, even though carb cement in the last 10 not years did not pay a dividend. Imagine using that money and buying more shares and just keep putting those up against it. In the okay. same carb about cement. Same carb cement. You are you are DC. You have a thing there. And again, it's like it, it, you're reinvesting dividends when you're not getting dividends. Yes. So I'm getting I, I, just by owning shares, I'm getting more of the same shares. And then the more shares, I got earn me more money because I'm lending I'm lending out them them new shares too. Yeah, and you're getting <laughs> and if you return on it, I mean I don't know, but let's say that the return is like half a percent for the year. Mm -hmm. Yo, that's comparable to many dividend return yields for the year. Yes. So you easily. could be getting dividend returns from a company that is not even paying dividends simply yep. by lending out your shares. Yep. And if you're if you're truly long term, then guess what? You are fine. He, he, Mr. Arco, this is a way to earn. It's a hedge because yo, the thing we don't talk about is you're saying I'm going to buy this stock for the next 10 years. You are not mm -hmm. being less risky. You are being more risky because you're saying, yo, for the next 10 years, this stuff will do well. And so much things can go wrong in 10 years. So like on 10, the things you want to go right, those things cannot work out. So you're, if you do that, then you're earning on it despite the up and the down and the crosses that come and all the good things. Um, if at the end of the year, you're in a thing that if you're, if at the end of the year, if in a 10 year time, you lose 50% mm -hmm. of your money on this stock. Mm -hmm. Where did it earn from it? They know I lose fifty percent. Exactly. I can't. I can't see that bad thing. Honestly. But if you are a pension that has five percent pension value locked up in shares for the last shares. twenty years, and you know in our circle, dividend is your goal. Thank and you, Jesus and Christ. I cannot understand the people who are supposed to actually know finance in Jamaica saying rubbish like this. It explains why they've been getting the results they've been getting. Big up Chris Berry. He's been getting some heavy results. Then I, now, as before I ask Danai this, I'm sure since we have David, David can, can mention something on it. David, what do you think about the, um, the reorganization of Mayberry? I've said it already. Mayberry investment shareholders are going to be more happy because if they're looking at dividend income, 
they don't pay the government of Jamaica any more ta- withholding taxes. So your dividends as a Mayberry shareholder are gonna go up correct fifteen percent. Yep. Boom, what just else? reorganization and you never have to do anything for it. Hmm. And all and, the uh, shares and then, Chris Berry might need to cut the check in you know, because it sounds like a Mayberry ad, it is not. But I have to not for So you. for those who are wondering what I'm speaking about, uh there's something called the CARICOM Double Taxation Treaty, which says you can't be taxed twice if a company in another CARICOM country is paying dividends to a shareholder who is not a CARICOM resident in another CARICOM country. So in this case, Mayberry Group will be in St. Lucia, since she's a CARICOM country, when they pay us the Jamaican shareholders, our dividends will not be taxed by GOJ. Yeah, um, that's that is that is one way to explain it. It is not how I would explain it, but the the end part is the um, accurate gist that a dividend paid by a because the the tax rate on dividends paid externally in Saint Lucia is zero, then the there would be no tax on the dividend that you'd receive in Jamaica because of what David just referenced. Yeah, the Caricom tra- taxation treaty. Double taxation. It, yeah. yeah. So even those who have Massey and Garden shares out here. There are no taxes on their dividends. So it speaks to the fact that you benefit as a national of CARICOM, you benefit from the law. When there are two taxation regimes interacting with whatever you're about to receive, you benefit from the lower one. And in this case, zero is the lower one. So um so there is there is that um benefit to be had. <clears throat> uh but suppose you don't give a damn about dividends like me. Well, Mayberry, as Mayberry mentioned in the release that yeah, this, this is a new structure would open up the opportunity for greater uh, inorganic growth, which potentially means different business opportunities. And to simply say that in English, Again. because they're no, long, no longer going to be, from uh, quote unquote, uh, having ex- honest ex- later oversight, they can do potential acquisitions. They can potentially do a joint venture or other projects without having to go through approval processes first. And in poor process, I speak from a regulatory standpoint. What you just said works very well on the news where nobody questions you. Um, <laughs> the, the, okay. I mean, yeah. It's very vague. It's, it's, yeah, it, it, it's it, very it means, right. It's yeah, open. but... It's such an open thing. Say it, in, say it actually in English, David. Let me hear how you see it. Mayberry has the opportunity now to, con- to consider and pursue more acquisitions, deals, and other business activities without additional constraints. What are the constraints now? Okay. So... Based on what I understand with respect to regulators, uh, regulators, you cannot just execute a transaction uh, without priority regulators be aware. So what that means, simple terms, you can just say go and buy a chicken farm without regulators being aware of initially. Now with the new structure. If you want to batch a chicken farm, you don't all think that you get your board to sign off and you're good. I, I don't know that neighbors regulators care about them buying a chicken farm. I think I think generally, I mean to David's credit, generally the anything that a regulated entity is doing, they kinda of have to pass it through. Um, yeah, tell it, yeah, talk to them. But yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and but imagine that. So if any deal I wanted to have to pass it through another a, a regulatory body, which means I have to go through a couple of desks, which means it limits me also in terms of what I know speed. I can do speed mm-hmm. and what I know I can do um, quietly because <laughs> yes, that's not to say that if you were to push things through a government organization that I, I don't think the government, I think the government is very, very safe. I trust them with all my data and I am not saying a bad word against the GOJ, but I think maybe other people might have not the same level of trust. Like if I want to do a confidential deal with a, with a company, I can't, if, the second we reach <clears throat> a certain level of the, the thing, I have to send it to a government organization where it's going to pass through four or five things. And then you have to hope that 
the person on the second committee who you don't even know um, doesn't say it to their new girlfriend that night who happens to work for the competitor. You know, you, there, you, there's a lot more risk. So, yeah, it frees things up for um, neighbor shareholders along those lines also. Um, it doesn't indicate the possibility of anything else to you, David? Not immediately. Like, I did. I just basically did it right up today, but I haven't necessarily sat down to really ruminate on it. Literally just up, sleep. I'm really sat down to really dig on it. What are you thinking? What, why, why no? This could have always been done. They've reorganized before. Why no? There's something that they plan to do very soon and they would prefer not to have, as you mentioned, that excess, uh, that excess uh, bureaucracy in essence. Or the bureaucracy still, but it just won't affect the business dealings of the new parent company. It's because, for those of you who will read the, the press release, because the actual regulated entity, Mayberry Investments Limited, will be a siloed so, company which will be, it won't have any subsidiaries. Yeah, it will be the subsidiary of the parent. Yeah. Mm. What a time. Yeah, what a time indeed. Why no? Anyway, when you ruminate on it, David, um, spend some time thinking about that and you might see some very, very interesting things along those lines. No problem. Uh, but this week was pretty busy in essence. Uh, that, that, that maybe announcement uh, was pretty good. Trying to remember what occurred during the week. I remember after, but yeah, I went to go and go, go back through some of the financials that sort of came out earlier this week. Okay, well, I'll ask you a question I was asking last week. What's your, what's your favorite stock from the start of the year, for the first six months of the year? First switch. Yeah, so rich. <laughs> Why? I made some good money on it. And <laughs> Which is right. I, no, I'm proud of you. Because I remember I the to invest. I'm happy now that you're actually putting money in and getting money out. <laughs> uh, I was actually, uh, actually, ta ta actually talking about returns. Remember the first time we talked to David, David never wanted to say what, what mm -hmm. kind of money he's making or what he's what he buying right now for whatever money he expect to get. Never talk about it. Yeah. Sounds good, David. Sounds good. No, and the thing is, the company, I did an interview with Cecil the other day that was interesting. And then just reading all the different news pieces coming out, it's just, it just been a very fun time. Mm, nice when you make money. And um, you, you say you did an interview, you're talking about Cecil Foster, the, the, the principal of Foster Rich there. Uh, well, there's been much debate in my circles, at least, around whether or not they'll be doing an AP or, an, or a rights issue. Um, which one do you think they'll be going with? Well, they can do a rest issue easily, and, and they could simply do just... APO. Which one? No, I was, I was, I, no, I was just, no, I was, I was thinking the potential for APO based on all what's going on. And when I speak all what's going on, the company apparently is getting control of it of blue emerald now and i mean control making it a subsidiary that's an associate and they yeah, mentioned it's not making already, it that's interesting it's not already a um a, a, a subsidiary or associate it's an associate at the moment when you lash their financials uh what I, I saw in the first quarter was that they did a massive capital injection into the associate but they didn't state if the shareholding interest had changed uh-huh so now it's sub sub how much yeah to what level what percentage of ownership do they have that that i need to check back again because i did a check recently on company's office website but i look for the document after but you mm -hmm. i think it was around 30 percent actually the audited financials but with that first course of injection i'm not sure what the actual stake is now it wasn't stated uh -huh. Gotcha. But I, 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 I see um, 
I saw an article. I don't think it's from you. I think it's from another newspaper. But uh, I saw an article where they spoke to it as a subsidiary. Or was it your yeah. article where they spoke to it as a subsidiary? Sometime, but... No, the, the reason why I, I said... Okay, so... The, I think it was this week. And... It was probably this week or the prior week where on the Blue Emerald SEZ approval with mm-hmm. Cecil, and that's where you said the subsidiary. Uh, yes, the recent. So that's what I was wondering because I've seen it not. So the thing is, despite so the, I've seen articles in the past, I call it call it like it's a sub, but then the accounting said otherwise. Then now, mm-hmm. when I saw it recently, it said subsidiary as one. So we again, I was, I was saying this publicly how much time around it. <laughs> so yeah. Is it changing now? Is it going to actually be a sub? What's going on there? So, uh, so we got confirmation that things will be changing then, basically. Right apparently, there. Still, apparently, still, I'm just looking back at the article right now to see uh, if it said subsidiary. I think the article did say subsidiary. And I believe the most recent one I saw the thing there, SEZ, I think it did say subsidiary. Mm-hmm. Because I, 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 I guess yes. it's something I look out for for them specifically. Yeah, so it says subsidiary in an in article in the first sentence. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I, I wish you see that cleared up pretty soon. And, uh, mm. that. The age is Tuesday, so you'll find out. But what will we find out on Tuesday, though? That's it, yes. the, like, the actual status of this subsidiary. Or I should say associates or whatever it, it actually consolidated. Whatever it is actually no. Okay. All but right. the going back to the, the actual point of the AGM where they're they're going to be um voting on the the resolutions to allow them to increase the shares, have a stock split, and also do a right APO session. Right issue and our APO. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I ask me again which one you think they're doing. <laughs> And don't worry, I know that you I know that you don't I know you you don't agree with my take on what my not my take. You don't agree with the reality of what an APO is, but what an APO does. But which one do you think they'll go with? So this is the last point I'm gonna discuss and I, I was thinking APO, so right now they are heavily leveraged. So what debt equity is one and a half times, they have a limit of two point three by first global. First Global just increased their variable rate, variable rate loans on Monday, and a couple of factories loans are variable rate as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially mentioned, you know, several different projects, one of which should actually bring in half a billion dollars in sales. Mm-hmm. They're looking to grow revenue by 80% this year. This is the not to answer right. April I'm sorry, should, right issue. No, 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 so what I don't know, which I'm still thinking about it, just to think about is have they found a partner who would be willing to uh, take their renounced shares that the company can get the capital? Who wouldn't? Yeah, so, I said sorry, it. They good have, they They're good. A partner, have they found a partner that what? So, in essence, have they found a barita in essence who is willing to uh, or a GK Capital, for example, who is willing to underwrite the deal, for example, uh, to what they need, in essence, to get to get everything done. So why wouldn't they just do a rights issue of the amount that they need? Or right, even do an APO with a non non underwrite one if for they want the money. Yeah, what does this have to do with rights issue versus APO? Yeah, maybe I'm not so understanding. So I'm not going to get into, into the whole. Oh no, we're not. We're not arguing. We're I'm not, not arguing, arguing on that. which one. No, no, no. Which one is better? And I'm asking which one you think is going to happen. Yeah, I just don't get what 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 you are saying. No, I don't get what it has to do with rights. Them doing a rights issue or them doing an APO. I don't need you to get into it. It's not debatable. It's. I just want to know what which one do you think they're gonna do, and why? No, I said, no, I said APO, and, I, and it's really based on the size of the deals that they have in front of them. And they, but the expectation that they're going to take more control in Blue Emerald and clear parts of their debt on their balance sheet. So because oh, oh. the deals they have in front of them are larger, they're gonna, they're likely to do an APO. More than like, more than easily. Yeah. But the size mm. of the deal doesn't doesn't matter. 
if says the deal matters, yes. Uh, if one, right. if one, so I want to just no. So he says, the one particular deal looking at right now, bring, coming in five hundred million dollars in mm -hmm. additional sales, mm -hmm. and we, I'm not. I saw something in Nepal this week about Blue Emerald. Need to read it back again, and. In PVC and transformer, transformer, transformer space, which is basically capital intensive, and current their situation. So they need money, but what does it have to do with APO versus rights issue? So either way, you raise money between either of them. Yeah. Well, let's see the find the appropriate partner to renounce the, the right the rights to it. They choose the rights issue instead. What do you? Okay, but let's say they don't find the right partner. Let's say they go with an APO instead. What do you think? What What is the thing that, that what will happen in that case then? Then they just go and find, a, find more invest, find a diverse pool of investors to work with. You think that the money from an APO comes from the public? You think that the majority of the money comes from, you think it actually comes from the public? No, not specifically from the public. Uh, where where does it come from? No, 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 no. When I speak, when you mention public, I wasn't thinking of retail investors in that sense. I was thinking more of, for example, uh, large companies or institutional investors with capital they want to want to deploy. So why not yeah. just renounce to them instead? Yeah. Why? Oh, why? 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 If I renounce, not only renounce, I only need to renounce to one guy. Yeah, it comes down to whatever works for them. Well, either works, if if that's the case. Yo, why right? renounce at all? Yeah, if they find the money to do themselves, we go to them. But you no, have to find meaning... the money in any case, even an APO. In either case, to find the money. I mean, if they have, if they can find the money themselves in their personal capacity. No, yeah. the... in, in their personal capacity in an APO, they have to find the money anyway. If I want X percent of my company at the end of the day. If I want to maintain my 80%, then and if I only want to go to 60%, if, I, if I'm if i only willing to go down to 60%, I will find the money for that. If I'm willing to go down to 40%, I will find the money for that. Mm -hmm. So whether AP or rights issue, wouldn't that be the case, no matter what? Because if I'm, if I have to find the money for that, then if I'm renouncing, then I only re I renounce a piece that I don't find the money for. Or do I'm not willing to put more money against it. I've not seen where that differentiates between rights or APO. Because if it's, if it's either I'll do the APO and make a special pool or whatever, or I just renounce it, then it works out either way, right? Yeah. But let's see what they say on Tuesday. No. It's, it's, way, it, 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 it's not what they say. It's not what they say. No. I say what you think and why you think. And if, so you say, you already said it. I was not, I was, I was not so sure why, I'm not sure if it were exactly on the why, meaning I'm not, I'm not sure how the why leads to that conclusion because, as I said before, either or is the same situation. Either I find this partner renounce to him, or I'm going, I do an APO on the same partner, buy the same amount of shares for the same amount of money anyway. You get know what I'm saying? Yeah. You do? So does that, no, change, does, 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 does that change what you think? Does that, does that change your answer? And if no, then is there a different reason? If you do agree, then that, reason, that, that means that that doesn't stand as a reason for the APO, basically. So you have a different reason to say it's an APO. You think it's an APO or it doesn't. You get what I'm saying, Jerry? I agree does, it does, it change if, does it change whether you think it's an APO or right, each other you're going with? And if so, then you, would the why, what, what's the new why if it's an APO? Or why would I write issue if you, if you decide I write issue? As you mentioned, they have to spend money in either case if they want to meet in a particular stake. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to do some more digging. Uh, How were you wait, against no, get... APOs if you never realized that before? No, he, no he's not against APOs. He's for. Oh, he's Sorry, okay. No, 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 no. How were you not clear on the fact that that specific fact would, uh, but you formed the view you formed before? Yeah, that's right. I, 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 I didn't think that, you know. Oh, yeah. If, if, but that, that, that to me is key. 
because that is one of the reasons that is given for an infield. You get me? Yeah. So if if that doesn't hold water, then that reason doesn't hold water. This is why I said that it's not debatable, David. It's not debatable. The reality shows it every time. It's just <laughs> Big up Marita. <laughs> yeah. It can it can be done. It, it can it's be many many events. Yeah. It's bad for retail investors. <laughs> what is it, Andy? Yeah. Many events and many articles. <laughs> yeah. yeah, boy, I don't. Yo, that's stressful, you know, bro. <laughs> yeah. To make it work, you have to go to all that. Yeah, and, and, and then you have to maintain and maintain and maintain. Mm-hmm. And, and, and the newspaper just maintain and maintain and maintain. <laughs> oh, boy. But David, big up. I, I, I'm glad we could have... Yeah, respect for the thing there. Yeah. yeah, yeah I think yeah. I think he added a lot. I think he added a lot. I think a lot of people took a lot from the view there. From the the charting thing there. And I think maybe some, some are more clear. I see somebody asked a question and it was clear by the discussion. So big up, David. Yeah, I'm probably... That, David. Yeah, man. I'm happy to hear that you're you're pro charting and you're, you're, you're not looking for it to be restricted. Allow retail investors to go in. And for Love people that. listening to this in the future, I mean, just play back that part where I'm suggesting that, you know, a percentage of available float is a great regulation and it immediately covers every um, company and it's centralized. So the JSE would cover the centralized tracking of that. And when the float for a company done, that float for a company done, unless another company can show that they're freeing up units or taking mm-hmm. on the role of market maker, which is another chance of more money to be made in the market. It's such a beautiful, good thing. It grows the market. Mm-hmm. Um, Interesting, huh? Yeah. You, 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 <laughs> despite the views, the, the same views that, that, that say we need these things. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Kind. Yeah. Um, so we're here, I'd say maybe we're down to our last half hour. Oh, you say if, if, again, I'll, I'll put out the call again. If you want to talk about stocks or anything like that, say that speaking request. This is a great time to talk about your portfolios. I haven't spoken about that very much. Um, and looking forward, what to expect. Then I was thinking about the next six months. Um, I think we'll have an- another... I'm being hopeful. We had like what, four IPOs for the start of the year. Four, yeah, I think it's four. Yeah, yeah about four, yeah. Uh, Eddie, Focal, nice Eddie Focal, um, Spur Tree, Spur Tree JFP, JFP, Dollar. and Dollar. Yeah. Uh, and, and, what, and a bunch of stocks that have grown heavily, mm-hmm. depend on, and a lot that have not, um, depending on how well you pick. If the second half of the year got exactly like the first half of the year, I'll, I'll end the year very happy, man. Um, so laughing to the bank. Yeah, and and even if it doesn't, I, I still because I'm thinking I expect maybe as in the grow grad group talking today, I was answering a couple of questions, and one of the things I've spoken about, I just mentioned like some IPOs that I know are rumored to be coming soon. There's the one on one, there's the um, yeah, there's one on one that's rumored to be coming soon. There's and they look like they're ramping up their PR and their their marketing very, very obviously geared around that. There's spin-off possibilities there's um i think the that gas company the other one what's it called R- rpl regency RPL, petroleum regency petroleum there is uh now what i'm thinking of let me check my messages there's like four of them four or five i can put my finger on very quickly and say that you know they're they're, they're expected to come and then there's spin-off possibilities like i say plus there's stuff like gk doing that stuff with the funds I, I wouldn't be surprised if they choose to list that fund company on its own um there, there's there's jamaica mortgage or, or, bank, or at least some thing. things yeah our jamaica mortgage bank i think has been more than ready supposedly for a long time i've been hearing about it for years uh maybe the nwc <laughs> sweet um not sweet river the NWC linked <laughs> um, Soapberry, Sweet River. So I, don't know I, got that from. I don't know if that will actually happen this year, but I'd be great if it did. Uh, there is the never ending, there is Summer from John Jackson and Tommy, <laughs> who I gather are now saying Summer is in Halloween. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a, a hurricane season, bro. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, they're so, so, they're, they're, if the, if even one fifth of that 
actually happens. Plus, the rest, and there's also the the always over the everybody's necks. JPS is coming. JPS right? breed on the back. Yeah, I don't even know if it actually is gonna be coming, but yeah. It, it, I hear say it, delay, man. I hear say delay. There, I hear say Dr. Clark said there are some delays on it going into one next financial year or something like that. Why didn't Why didn't you check it? Mm, in fact, I'm surprised. I, I would think if David still on the line, so I'm sure he would know. I don't see him, but yeah, I'm. I'm and in fact, David, if, 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 if you hear this just message, just shoot me a message or so. Yeah, if Dr. Clark said that it is delayed, though, then it's delayed. He would know who better, right? And um, no, no, he would know. Meaning, David, David, I heard it. I'm sure. No, man. Yeah, yeah. No, I understood what you meant, but I think I, I heard the same thing. I, I think I already oh. mentioned that there is delays, but pinch of salt. I could be wrong. Um, but if mm. he says that there, I suspect there are delays. So, yeah, yeah, so he, he would know. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, and well, maybe they want, maybe they want a couple more earnings right now. The country need the money and can't let go. Can't let go JPS at a time like this. It's the niceness, you know. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, or who knows? The, or maybe the structure of the deal or whatever. But yeah, there's loads and loads, loads and loads of options. And even if nothing comes to the market, the stocks on the market are not doing badly. I I will say, we're joking off air or either earlier or yesterday or something. That I we're joking about the whole dark horse thing that had said some time ago. <laughs> Um, mm-hmm. And I'm saying that my my dark horse for the rest of this year is probably going to be SVL. Um, mm-hmm. And I've been saying that for a little while. I've been owning, buying, sell sometimes, buying back. I don't think them start yet. I think the next set of results are supposed to blow us out of the water. I, we had Chris Berry come on in here a couple of weeks ago, and he said something that him and the rest of his team have been saying for a long time about the, the huge result of from of, of the impact of scratchers plus everything else plus k manas blowing up plus their entry into the other markets and the thing that we have been saying on this and on the podcast for a long time now that svl is actually infrastructure and so infrastructure makes money by enabling other businesses on top of it and that has now finally starting to come to fruition um i think that i think they also mentioned wanting to go into money transfer or something like that i know they're into loans and they're, they're obviously very digital with their loans. I think, yeah, I I, I I own SVL and I'm buying more SVL and I'll probably end up, barring anything grand, I'll probably be ending the year with my SVL be worth a lot more than I've paid for it so far. And um, I don't know if I want to talk about any other stock because I don't want to turn it into what the grand say he likes, but I, I don't know. If you, I definitely don't know if you want to talk about anything like that than I, but outside of what stock was one thing that you maybe are excited about on the market? Outside of what? Outside of actually naming a stock, because I know if you go say you like this, everybody would don't go deny or do it, and the people you never recommend to say, how come you never tell me that? Oh, yes. Yeah. So, so oh, outside, of, outside of naming a stock, what am I, what am I excited for on the market with this? Yeah, just any one thing in any area. Any one thing, one thing. I don't know. That sounds, that sounds vague. I don't know what it's being yeah deliberately vague so outside of just like one company that you're excited about but if you want to talk about a company that's on i know i know i want i want i want want to be vague (laughs) i I want to be vague so i want to know what you mean by that well no it's just yeah one thing for the next for the the last half of the year was one thing that you last half of the year yeah all right hold on hold on hold on open my money jay talk carefully I want to say rights issues, but no. Nah. I mean, yes, we... I want to be nice. I'm excited about any rights issues that are happening on the market. Same, you know, same, this, same. Especially in this APO time, yeah. Mm-hmm. The companies that understand and care about their retail investors and and are still willing to do rights issues in these times. Your money yeah, is not listening. But... Yeah. Yeah, that's uh... <laughs> all. I think I've won that. I think the fee is an RIT versus an ATO from the broker side. Is it law? I wouldn't be surprised enough. I would not be surprised. To do a right issue? Yeah, man. But then just charge. Yeah, I I would think so as well, you know, but then you know, it's a bro, I would think so as well. But you know, you know the thing, you know, you know the thing. <laughs> 
but it's, it's, oh, it's we like, book more man hours and we can he actually do more than APU. In meaning you have to go to the you have to walk them through the prospectus writing and all that niceness. Yeah, and offering they, it to the public, but, so there is more work. You're right. Yeah, there's more work. This so. mm-hmm. mm. find some exciting. It's like I want to find some exciting by being with it. It not. I feel. I feel like I want to be special. That's why. <laughs> if you want to find something, that if you want to find something. If you, if you want to find Ex- something really special in that school. It's only properly excited. Oh, somebody. I think I lost a lot of that, you know. My, yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. And then the things I'm excited about, I, I can't comfortably say and say in a forum like this because of the impact it might have. For some things. Some things I will, some things I might not. And I mean, I don't... Oh, yes. It, I know exactly a specific thing that I find actually exciting. And you know it's it. See, my... I don't know what I say it. Something in case you want, huh? in case you want to see it. You know. My gave a, a wonderful thing. I don't want to say it. I can give it to you. It's the latest thing she just just said as a suggestion. Um, I'll take a one. She said the tourism rates exceeding the 2019 figures. Oh, that, that's strong, you know? Oh, that's, that's strong, you know, bro? Yeah, that's, 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 actually, that's, that's actually something I'm excited about. And yeah. not only from... I think a big part of the excitement there is mm-hmm. watching the stocks align there and not necessarily that the thing, not necessarily that why maybe... I think it's uncertainty around what they'll be doing. Because I've seen some very interesting things across each of those stocks. I find, I find each of the, the, the specific boy tourism stocks, mm-hmm. each of them to me, I, I've been looking at them very, a lot recently, and they'll each be accepting them on way. Yeah, for, you know, for I can tell you, for me, I have been um, on that same tourism stock point, I have been... Uh, what did I say? I, I've been very excited about the fact that the market has acted exactly as I expected. Mm-hmm. Exactly as I expected around the tourism stocks. So it's like, right, because so much of the market is retail now, and so mm-hmm. much of the retail just tries to follow the hype, mm-hmm. and nobody has really been talking about it. Talking about um, Well, you find it so interesting. It, it's, yeah, yeah, it's about the thing there. How the talk shifts. And how, because of the talk shifting, people will stop looking so. And be, think of the, the tourism stocks at the start of this year, the end of last year, and how the talk was there heavily. And it's for a short time. Not, not, nothing bad happened. Not, not change. And it's almost like, yo, not, not go on. There. If, 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 if you were to check the conversation, not, not go on over this, bro. Mm-hmm. Despite not, yo news article, despite every every single source saying yo we're looking great, bro. Because nobody not talk about it, and I, I I will tell you guys I'm selfish. That's part of why I don't really talk about it either. I'm not really looking. And I, I'm oh no, looking. I am I know I am very <laughs> selfish. In fact, yeah. I'm I'm sure people wonder why I don't tweet as much anymore. Yeah, yeah. Well, one I, minute I'm time, minute I'm time like that. For one and two, Jesus, that's every time I every time every time I put my hand behind a tweet, we got talk about a stock. I was thinking. The client better the client get it than than us because then imagine me you imagine me want my client to go buy something yeah and too much people did it already <laughs> no no no, no circle no. you don't get circles yet you don't get the twitter circles yet it is I oh no no yeah because no i will tweet for my circle like yeah, people poor man more bro eventually <laughs> i think i'm really talking to everybody though so you'll have it so for me for at least for the the, the people the girl subscribers is who I, I i add to it so as long as you're a subscriber you get added to um you get added to the twitter circle so like they'll get the tweets explaining i have a third that have been two threads that have been delaying on doing i'll do both of them for my circle um this this month well, probably this week coming um I go. I one of them will be around tourism. Yeah, that's such a great point. Around the impact of the tourism because, like your CPJ, Dolphin Cove, like nobody has been paying attention to the fact that the business has gotten better, meaning more money coming, heavy more more money coming at a higher rate. There is one. I'll, I'll tell one thing that I shared with the grower group last week. Um, and I'm working from memory here, but it is that. I think it's it's the minister saying something along the lines of I say it was an additional or an addendum. Let me find it. 
I share one point around. I can't even share it from the group, but I'll, I'll say what it is. It's the fact that more tourists come to Jamaica and they stay longer now, and, and they also pay more while they're here. So, oh yes, bro, we, we move. <laughs> it's about a, a, he said nine percent in the article, but it's about an eight point two percent increase in the length of time the average tourist spends in Jamaica now, and their you spend know, per day has moved mm -hmm. up about i want to say another nine percent it moved from 169 to 182 per day yeah and it was interesting numbers... what's that the usd lovers are they are i mean from an investment perspective the people that talk about usd earnings they mm -hmm. also often speak about long term but they don't put them in the same conversation just think of then... imagine being a, imagine a dc on thing there on CPJ, past the point where you expect an APO to bother them, meaning bother the share price. Just on boy, the USD going up, whatever is happening in the thing there, in the tourism sector, what's going to happen in the tourism sector? And to me, that's a strong, strong, strong buy, bro. And I don't hear it. And I don't I'm hear a talk at all. And I'm not sad that I'm I not, don't I'm hear not. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True. You're damn right. <laughs> I know when we'll hear it. I know I know when we'll hear it. And I know when people hear it and they'll start to go in. And I'll be thankful because while everybody's looking this way, that's when the gains well the, the girl group know how it go. Um but that that's something that I'm excited about. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. Mike, for that one. Um because yeah. Every time. Yeah. yeah well my my good. strike, I know. Consistently, <laughs> consistently, Constant. consistently. Yeah, man. yeah. Yeah, the striker, the striker too. Why? Uh, yeah, well, you know, I've said like 10 times if people, if anybody else wants to send a speaking request, they can. I haven't seen anybody send any speaking requests. And I I certainly don't mind the early night. So it's the last chance for people to send a speaking request if they want. If you don't, that's also perfectly fine. We'll have an early night. And I'll be very, very happy to get some dinner and some rest. Um. And if you have anything you want to put out there, then I list open up again. Uh no, not this month yet. But I think I still have, I still have it. I don't even know. But let me check. I think I got a good at that. I think COVID it just boxed me out of the zone, bro. And then work. I was working through it and in full swing back into everything. I didn't even tweet much about it. But yeah, right. big up people. Start investing. Keep investing. Uh, truly, like honestly. Your life can change so much. I've seen all that I said recently, and I think there is a uh, stand behind that fully. <laughs> My life has changed. I'm sure Randy can say about what, what, a, what an early start did for him. Especially, I think I think you haven't put, I think you haven't told your story, you know. I and from, haven't really And, no. and from really a certain perspective, like oh yeah, you start young and whatever, whatever, but then the point where you start taking it seriously at a different level, and where you were at that at that point. Versus the change you've seen since then. I, I don't yeah. know, bro. To me, it's a powerful story. So I think you tell it more. That's actually true. You know what? Maybe, maybe I'll, I'll wait for the right. Maybe I, maybe I don't tell it on this one. Maybe I'll wait for the, somebody invite me to somewhere and I'll, I'll tell it there. I've kind of seen <laughs> another one before. And um, yeah, you're right. At an, on another place, I might can tell it. Um, big up the... the as this, you know what I've been listening to every now and then the other day that I... Uh, what is... Uh, the name is slipping me now. It's another podcast. Oh my God! Uh, the one we one we used to listen to on the way to break out earnings. No, 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 no! It's a Jamaican podcast, right? You know exactly what it is. I just it's the name. Oh, the limitless, limitless podcast. The limitless guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have, limitless I have, I haven't, I haven't given the time, and I have not given it the time. I should. I've listened to, I've listened to a couple of episodes, like two or three. I was doing something, and I put one on, and it ran into another one, and I, I deliberately listened to it. It is cool. I know they're both investors. I know they're both mm -hmm. sharp. Um, and I said it to the guy, one of the guys who who did it. Um, Matthew, I think he's saying, oh yeah, you know, those earning season guys left a gap in the market. <laughs> 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 and I love that. I love that. So big up you guys. If you, if you like podcasts, I've been, I've been promising forever for more audio for the people like me who care about audio. Oh, people, 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 people are about me up in bro. People are asking where is the podcast. Well, tell them this. I, also... I tell them, so I, 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 that's exactly what I tell them. I say, oh, this is a brief talk. It will come back. But for right now, yeah. we might be too busy for it. So exactly. big talk works really well for it. We can schedule it much easier. 
And I should, I, I will probably do some stuff around that too. Especially this month, I don't put in the right energy into it, so I'm not doing it now. But this month is July, which marks what, three or four years now? Because we started, Damn. we started, we started earning season in August, but August we started and grow in July. So I want to say it's July 2019 that I started grow. Really? You started yeah. grow before earning season? I think so. Yeah. Fuck it, you're right. Very Ah, God, I think I've been, I'm in reason that's, to be so. Okay, that's I think three that. solid years of, 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 of teaching people every month how this I'm putting stuff out there for free. <laughs> and I, I, Boy, I, yeah, I, 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 I keep saying they can't, they can't, they can't, they can't give people freeness. <laughs> I don't think people value it unless they I think no, a lot more people are, are coming to appreciate what we meant when we said that we give away a lot. Um, I find it funny when people say that we don't. Like, you know, I'm sure we're like, oh, you know, like, we don't think it should be. We're not doing this thing. We want to help people. We're not trying to do it like some people are just trying to make money off of it. And tell me something that's that's valuable. That's good for free. We give away a lot of value for free. But yes, it's only fair that we yeah, make money yeah. from it. That's why I'm happy every time yeah, I do it. And I, 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 I keep laughing at Randy, actually, about why? when I remember when I met you, it was no more free Randy. And that's more than and three years was... ago. Yeah, man, but your frustration was uh, was tied to the amount of energy you were putting in giving away for free, and then the feedback, the seriousness of. I mean, just really, I've seen so, uh, just you the free Randy. Hey, yo, after I was buying about no more free Randy, he went on to do no free Randy for a lot more years after that, <laughs> right? Two more years so, or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, uh. He, he was still free after that frustration. But I, I during that whole time, so that's when I met him, and then after that, probably a whole time, kept doing the freeness. And I have not seen results from things. I think people are taking, people not investing a certain I meaning. So when you put money up, it's like a, you, you automatically put a little seriousness behind it. Mm -hmm. you, what, you, what you're getting from a space you're paying for versus yeah. you're know, opening his WhatsApp group and I'm. I hope said this guy has some free picks. I check it every now and then versus your pay for this thing. I've not seen results from from thing there. And some of the same people that you had when you were free and carry over to the thing there. And I've seen them be more serious now, be more intentional. No, then putting my money behind it. So I always laugh at you. I've said this here many times. When you were free, it's when they start charging people, people get serious about what they're getting from you. That's true. And it caused me to also step up what I do in terms of. I never ever, I, I, I've, at this point, I have a long track record of asking customers. Like, I believe in the value increase. Any value you put in, you must get at least that and like it more out of it. And it makes mm -hmm. me keep things at a certain level as a result. Because if I promise X or if, I, if you pay for X, you have to get at least X and any mm -hmm. extra on top of it. And so I give that level of service. And people receive that and it's much better than sometimes I give them the same thing. I'm more for free, but it's like if you give somebody a mansion that you think that they love it, but they probably won't. There's, there's probably a reason why they never got to the point of being able to afford a mansion on their own. But the second somebody pay for it, you're right. They, 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 they truly value it. So here's to the people who keep, who make some money <laughs> from the things that they put out. Lot of winners versus the one who, one, one who work for it to get there <laughs> that's true nobody gets to uh, being a multi-millionaire um the hard way and and doesn't and, and is unable to truly help themselves in life after that outside of health issues and that sort of stuff right but if you win the lotto how many lotto winners go back to being broke a couple of years later yeah so value has a value only that value is valid and we have wow duffy who came on to help us close the show duffy what's up duffy what's going Hello. Ah, uh, nothing one. You hearing me? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Hearing you go down clear. clear. I'm, I'm, I'm just invest on the internet. Clear up. Right. <laughs> oh. Why? Listen. Every time I talk, that I bullies me about my internet. <laughs> I don't know why? I feel attacked. Okay, no, it is not a fair fight. You can bully me now because my internet is giving me issues for three weeks now. Bully yeah, me right. all you want. <laughs> 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 but yeah, um, I wanted I wanted to talk about what you guys were saying about money 
and people talking about agenda as someone who i still consider myself relatively new to you guys and i used what people were saying and this is for anybody who's undecided i guess as to whether or not they want to invest in paying for something to deal with one of you guys whether it's paying for the class or paying for a session with the night i used what people were saying to help make my decision because i looked at it as like it's all right i leaned i leaned all right i leaned into the bad things let me let me put it that way someone was saying okay he has an agenda he just wants to make money off of people and i was like okay Okay, so what? Is that is that serious something? So what? No one is opening a wholesale for charity. No one is open. No one is going to give you a car for free unless you and them good like that. So I looked into it. I was like, okay, this man is charging for something. And it wasn't just you. It was everybody who has an investor class somewhere. I researched each and every one of them, and you guys consistently were the only ones who had like up-to-date reviews like i literally would log into twitter every day go into youtube every day and see fresh comments when i looked at other classes and stuff the last good review they had was like from 2000 and boy boy whenever so basically if, if when it comes to decision making in general you should lean into the bad comments and try to prove them and if you can't prove them what does that say well <laughs> if you listen to the earlier stuff you know you hear i used to say like when whenever somebody like criticize girl i just dm them and give them a ticket so come to girl come on there's a whole bunch of people who have done girl offer come and expose me because when there is that you've done girl duffy um so you you've seen what what everybody who's done it now knows like they go to it and it's not a joke thing it's a very serious thing and i put a lot into it and um it is meant to help you truly and it, it has been around at this point for three years because because of the work I put in there and it, it is as strong and growing because of the work I put in there. So I think that the problem is if somebody offers you something for free, then it reduces their risk because if you don't like it, well, you never pay for it. Pay for it, yep. All right. But if, if, you, if you pay for it, you, you, you can ball if you don't get what you're supposed to get and... The risk is there, and that risk brings quality. Um, and also, I don't know anybody who's criticized me for charging for what I do. That doesn't work for a company that charges their clients for what they do. <laughs> like, I mean, they I charge thought, their employer, yeah, don't they? This that we are doing on a Friday night is not. It's not. It, nobody else is doing it. The multi-billion-dollar mm -hmm. companies aren't doing it. Um. Yeah, I, I I don't know. Maybe that they can do it. The closest I see is like Mayberry and the forums. And even mm -hmm. that isn't quite in the same way. And they won't say some of the same things that we'll say. They won't they won't go to certain things. And that's one host that kind of doing it out of the 15 that exists. Um, and the JC itself. And the JC also charges for his classes. I've done the JCs, a couple of JC's courses. Then I too. Um, yeah, those courses are paid and they charge a lot too. I think I paid what six was it sixty grand that night? It was years ago. What was it, sixty grand? Yeah, remember that, that, that nice one. Yeah, it was something like that. Sixty grand for the course and um it's a course. It it, it, <laughs> it, it yeah, it's yeah, the JC, I think uh, oh it, it was it is it's it, it, it's it's not for learn how to invest your money, learn a practical way to make money on it's it's really this is what investing is. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. It's like an intro to investing. Uh, you know what you know what different assets are. You know different parts of the market. You know certain yeah. you learn certain regulations, and then that's yeah. it. It's not. It's a good it's not, course hey, for what it is. It's what it is. It's not. Yeah. It's it's not a grower competitor. It's it's a com different thing completely. If you're going to that with, if you're going to that, with the expectation of what you're getting from growers, the same thing, you will not get that. If you probably didn't work in it, you probably you never know, working. You know, did anything in school that lean towards the industry, and you want to learn, and you maybe want to go into the industry, then that's a good start. You, you, get, you get the knowledge of what goes on within the industry, but you're, you're not getting. How do I know when to buy this stock? How do I set my goals for my portfolio, mm -hmm. for my money, for my life? You're not getting that from it. Different thing completely. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I My remember. only thing, though, Randy, mm-hmm. to you, mm-hmm. of your girl classes, and I want to know, have you gotten your assistant yet? Because I saw you um advertising saying you were looking for an assistant, and couples, uh-huh. you've been teaching to get hungry, and I understand how you allow that to happen to yourself. What? For, to, for, wait, wait, sorry, what? What you say about hungry? Yes, you're like in the classes, you're organizing and stuff to make sure that everybody's okay, making sure that you start on time. And somewhere along the line, you either don't eat breakfast, don't eat lunch, something happens, and you get exhausted, tired, and hungry. So, the assistant that you were advertising for from way, way, have you gotten that person yet? And I, if not, I hope you do so soon because they these marathons. Exactly. That's okay, exactly what. Just stay as a long time on it. <laughs> Meaning, we see the we see the earning season, and Randy forget saying so supposed to get dinner or lunch or something like that. Yeah. He needs to take care of himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But my sister not going to go. My assistant is not my girl. Um, I need an assistant for work purposes. Actually, sort of have. I mean, that's work. That's, that's work purposes. Sorting out lunch. If if it if it needed for your productivity, needed for that in a row. That is actually true, and and my girlfriend would agree. But <laughs> but but um. Sure, she can't get no, off both. <laughs> trust me. But no, I I have not gotten the assistant. Yes, I do still need one. Actually, hired one, and it turns out it's not. It's very hard to find good people. Right fit. Yeah, the right fit is hard to find. This one, I don't know. But if anybody is, um, if you have a little bit of financial knowledge, uh, yeah, look out. Uh, not if you're looking at work also. You're yeah, big up, big up. Because a controversial thing, I won't say who told me, but big up an entrepreneur who said to me that, yo, I don't ever hire people who are out of work because if you're really good, you're never out of work. So if, him, if that person is hiring somebody, they hire them away from somewhere else. So if you like, if you have a job and you're looking at a different job or change a career or something, then they, they hire. And I understand that stance more now because the truth is, if you're really, really good, if you're professional, chances are you're already somewhere. So I, I'm going to have to do it. Why, Duffy? You know somebody who who is really, really good and looking. They can learn on the job, you know, but they have to be much more organized than me and um much more communicative. <laughs> Yeah. And, um, I will know that I know that you're still looking. I can resend the information to the person because I, I did it because I was actually talking to the person who I sent you information to early from when and they got a they got a different job. So yeah, that probably what you're saying just now probably applies to them. So we'll they're, see. They're very organized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're at, they're working for. They got poached. They're someone who consistently gets poached. Okay. So they might be willing to get poached again. Okay. Well, well when I can, I can tell you, so when we'll I find see. the right, when I find the right assistant, they will not get poached again. Like I'm not going Brother. to, allow, I'm not going to allow you to leave. <laughs> like whatever, whatever they're offering you, just tell me, and you get more. But yeah, when I find the right fit, they're not going. Like and they're gonna lock up the people that mean I just be. No, I'm gonna lock them up in you the You can't bank. leave. No, I'm not gonna tell them you can't leave. I'm gonna make it so that them don't want to leave. <laughs> I get it. What are they offering you? Oh, there is it's fifty percent more pay. Congrats, you just got a raise. I'm not, I'm not, yeah, the right. As you ever notice that CEOs of companies tend to like if they go somewhere else, they carry the secretary with them. Uh huh. And they are as they from a very long RDO. This person been with for years. Yeah. I don't care let that person go. That person is valuable. Hey, yo, listen up. My, my hardest part is deciding that what I want in an assistant exists in a person. Oh yeah. Pick up Angelique. That's just a random shout out. Like I, I'm looking back and I respect what that girl did for for the people she worked with. I understood now. I, if I find the right person, they are not getting to go anywhere. All I'm getting is more money, and I'm going to learn a whole lot more about stocks and like getting rich will be the, the 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 lowest of the things that actually happen to you from it. Anyway, still looking. And if you guys want to help me pay for that assistant. Come, come to one of the girl classes in July, <laughs> uh, that you see on screen, right? Uh, not the first one. The one on the tenth is just for is just for subscribers. That Q and A session, um, but the first beginner girl is a Saturday the twenty third, and then we do split girl at the twenty sixth and twenty seventh, and advanced girl for the people who are advanced on um, the thirtieth. And the topic this month is investing for busy people with limited time. Um, oh, that's a good one. 
Yeah, because that's something that a lot of people ask me about. And I see it in how we talk, and it actually came up recently in the same group, right? I was saying to the, mm-hmm. the, the same person that, yo, it's so funny you did that this month because that's what we're talking about. And um, yeah, because a lot of people think and want to get into investing, but I think you have to have the time. I can't, I can't be in front of the computer all the time and follow Ray, Ray, Ray. So this advanced grow is for the people who might be along that. I remember everybody, if you've never, if you've done grow and you've never been to Danai, you get a discount from doing grow to go and see the night. And I also have a couple mm-hmm. of slots, closer slots that the people who do grow, I, I give them out based on um, participation, but you don't have to wait the two months that always book out for. You can get it very, very quickly. In fact, I have two coming up that I see that I um, I think they're right near the grow date. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, that's um, the ad for grow. And of course, my money JA sign up. People, this is the month you want to sign up. That's all I'll say. This is the month you want to sign up. This month and next, you want to be up, up on from early. Um, and if you're signing up for one of the paid packages, you want to be on a premium package. Anyway, outside of that, do grow, sign up on my money, JA, link that night, dhalladvisory.com, and enjoy your weekend and stay safe. And I will see you guys next week. We got one last thing, Dana. You want to talk about the monkey pox? Um. Sure, right, go ahead. Me need, I don't want to talk about you. I'm afraid you're afraid. I, I'm so scared. I yeah, good to me so... now. If me, you know. <laughs> I, do, so I, do, I just work on things. I do for, for, for a good, good while. Now, if my head at all. Yeah. You know <laughs> what? I mean? carnival, it, carnival woke up for me. I never, I never, I had all intention on Saturday this year. So, I'm not carnival. Yeah. No, me, I find out this week says so this weekend. And guess who, guess who, not care for go again? Really? I mean, like, <laughs> <I'm> all right, <laughs> <I'm> all right. <laughs> yeah. like if you see me, if you see me now this weekend, and no, say nothing, is me. <laughs> mm. I'm not going to me. I'm all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah if if not, it's real. Ask yeah. me it. Yeah, yeah. I remember one of the other party there was something. Boy, I don't know. But well, like, all know it's a house party to my thing. But I also think. But maybe next week we can talk about fear on the market because fear and how it impacts the market. That's a, ah, yes. maybe a good a good one because also the monkeypox idea and the market might be. It's who's a hero, bro. It's who's a hero. So, so oh, good. So, I suck a good out and I'm going to tell you a monkeypox breed though. We've just and then you will hear it repeated like over and over and over. You're doing a market great job because monkeypox coming. Uh, watch it. Yeah. Watch the style. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a recession or inflation. Talking about it brings it closer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, anyway, guys, uh, thank you. Hope you enjoyed Brick Talk this week, and we'll see you again next week.